the, the aiming flame, the thing right there. Dun, dun, dun. We finally have an aiming flame. All right, hey, but we should introduce ourselves. Hey, welcome to another episode of Northwest Brewmeister. Man, is that full worse? I know it's in the best spot. It, it, you, you put it there. I don't know. I banged it three times before we even. Okay. Anyways, hi, welcome <laughs> to the Northwest Brewmeisters. My name is Jamie. Steve. And we're a couple guys who drink beer and like beer, and I think you should too. Yes. And today we ride for the Tim, which the Tim was actually on a couple episodes, was. like last time. Last so, episode, yeah. So there's a whole story behind the Tim, which we're not going to tell you now. We're going to let you just sleep. What the hell is this thing about the Tim? Watch the previous episode. Yes. That'll, that'll help you out. The Tim is good. It's, it's fun. It's, it's an intro. And someday, if you actually tune in and then tune in again and maybe follow us and subscribe, you'll get to know about the tip. But yeah, merch in the future. Oh, who is this? Ola, Kristoff, and Smoke. Well, hello, Kristoff and Smoke. And the Silver Energizer. Yeah, we know who you are. We're on to you, Silver Energizer. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? Thank you so much for tuning in. You are loyal. You are awesome. All right, so what are we brewing today? Today we are brewing a Mac and Jack clone. So Mac and Jack is a staple beer of the Pacific Northwest. It's an amber ale. Isn't it African amber? I mean, well, yeah, they call it African amber ale, but it's mm -hmm. not not from Africa. It's... Well, then why do they? <laughs> it's a Northwestern beer. <laughs> why do they call it African? I don't know. Maybe it's part of their marketing. Is that like so? They're marketing. Maybe that sounds like cultural appropriation to me. Could be. I don't know. Are we allowed to brew this beer? Yeah, because it is it's not an African ale, it's just a Mac and Jack clone. Oh. Mac and Jack is the the brewery, I believe. Wow, did you take that statement way too seriously? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it seemed like a legit question. So it is a amber ale. It is accented with notes of toffee and citrus. And it's, right. usually, it's usually kind of um hazy if I remember right, but with the actual I want to take a moment right now and say how much I love your daughters. They're great. The ones we didn't sell. <laughs> we never sold any children. <laughs> okay, so hi Riley. Oh, uh, Sian. Kristoff and Smoke. Oh. It's a very cool screen. Oh, name. <laughs> I know that Smoke is her horse. Kristoff is the other horse she she's we've been taking care of. So that's oh, right. Oh, okay, that's a good thing. Now, now I don't that it all clicked. Yeah. Okay. Kristoff is a big horse too. I've seen him. He's really? Like, yeah, he's a big horse. Nice. Okay. All right. Sweet. Well, hello, children. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for tuning in, guys. Yes, supporting us, making us feel like we're worthy of something. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Mac and so, Jack so this tends to be a little more on the malty side, by snowy, hoppy, and piney. Uh, original gravity is 1.060. Final gravity is 1.016. The ABV is 5.8 percent, and the IBU is 43. So it's it's not super strong. It's not bitter, and it's not hoppy. So kind of get a blend of everything in there. So it's boring. No, it tastes good though. It's I'm sure it's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> it's not strong. It's not high ABV. It's not hoppy. It's just not. It's, not, <laughs> it's the not beer. It's the not and beer. it's not African. Right. You know, even, though, even though the actual label is African ale. They do. They say African, African amber. That's what they say on it. And I believe the graphics are like elephants. So, you know, like isn't it a lion for the Mac and Jack? I don't know, I just saw something else by Mac and Jack. Their amber is not the only thing they make. I don't know. No, no, yeah, they, they've actually ventured out. And the, yeah, originally it was only that one forever. Right, for the longest time. And I was looking at one that had a lion on there. But oh, they're still going with the African theme. Maybe their owners are African. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. There's got to be an African. I mean, maybe they've been to Africa and really like it. Oh, that's possible. Yeah. Maybe they visited. So. I'm writing a song that definitely sounds Irish. I'm not Irish. Don't yeah. let the hat fool you. <laughs> I'm not even remotely Irish. <laughs> oh wait, I might be. I don't know. My mom's kind of a mutt. A mutt. Heinz 57. I mean, there's not much of a flattering way to say you don't know your lineage. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> it happens. So in any case, yeah. Mac and Jack. Mac and Jack. Clone. Clone. So today's kit book is comprised of. Half pound of Crystal 80, half pound of Carapils, and a half pound of Munich. These are our steeping grains, which we didn't talk about this pre-show. Do we want a cold steep or steep attempt? Uh, we might as well cold steep. In fact, we should get to go. We are totally reversing roles. I will pour the water while you continue to do it. All right. So I'm not sure I know how to do this. We have... You usually do this. <laughs> Would you like me to write an instruction for you? 
Yes. <laughs> we also have 6.6 .6 pounds of Pilsen liquid malt extractors here in these jars. Would that be any louder? I know, right? <laughs> and we also have one pound of Pilsen dry malt extract. So we'll just mix all that in. Yeast is white yeast. 1098 British Ale, and we're not bottling, so I'm not going to worry about reading, reading to you about the uh, corn sugar. That's why they call it African, because of the English Empire and the Y yeast and the British Ale, and Britain used to own most of Africa, and oh. then they didn't. They yeah. kind of argued with the Dutch. Gotcha. And so now, you know, it's kind of a stretch, isn't it? That's okay. <laughs> so I'm going to prep our grains here. A good old spoon system. Now this muslin stock is not, it's pretty full for the other ones. Which means we're not going to have as much dip, you know what I mean, like a, in a tea bag style. You don't have to worry about it resting on the bottom? Possibly, but I'm afraid it might not even make it down. Make it all the way, yeah. We can bend the spoon. Just saying. I don't recommend we bend You don't spoon. bend the spoon, you bend the wine around the spoon. There is no spoon. Okay. <laughs> there is no spoon. Yeah. <laughs> That's dating ourselves. Meanwhile, our two viewers, your yeah. nephew and your daughter, are like, what, what are they talking, talking about? about? <laughs> Watch the movie The Matrix. Good movie. First one. The rest sucks. Yeah, the rest weren't very good at all. Well, the third one was kind of okay, but the second one. So oh, there's more Matrix movies coming. Really? Yeah. Are they going to be as bad as the second one? I'm sure hope not. There's at least, I know there's another one. Is it going to be anything like Star Wars? God, hope not. Oh, that's not how, what they did to Star Wars was just an atrocious atrocity. It was all the social justice stuff that they called. Oh, exactly. You know, we just like. All right, well, we'll do. Oh, he didn't put the flame on. That's right. That's what you put it in there. I mean, that's not a big deal. Make sure this isn't going to. Touch the bottom. Yeah. We're good. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Well done. Okay. Wait. Look what we got. Okay. So. Same thing. <laughs> also, I would like you to observe this. These are called arm hairs. Do you know what's cool about this episode? These will still be here after we're done. Unlike other episodes, because Steve doesn't have a name of flame, but now he does. Now he does. All right. Sweet. Go ahead. Heavy. Got it. All right, there, perfect. And we have fire. Cool, so we're doing cold steep today, which we've had that discussion many times before. Yeah, that's fine. Cold steep would be okay. Cold steep versus hot steep. So, cold steep, for you, those of you that are new to us, we're just starting our steeping while the water is not quite at steeping temperature, which is fine. It's just going to add maybe less your color. Maybe a slight bit more flavor to the beer. And unlike our, excuse me, as all our other uh, other recipes, we're going to steep for 30 minutes at temperature between 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after 30 minutes, we'll, we'll get rid of the steeping grains and then we'll start the actual boil process. Add our extracts and then our hops. And oh, then you know what? I forgot the name of the hops. Both. The uh, first hot pack is Centennial at the 60 minute mark. Okay. The second hot pack is a Cascade at two minute. So okay. this is going to be this is going to be good. I believe it. Of course, that's not saying much. All our beers are good. I know, we have good. yet to be disappointed. Even the one that we're kind of disappointed <laughs> in, we were still like, this is totally drink. I'm still drinking, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> totally drink it. So our, by the way, if any of you are watching replays and you're return viewers, our Newcastle clone. Came out perfect, perfect, really, because the ultimate judge, my wife, uh, was like, tastes like just like Newcastle. No okay, kids, sweet, man, cool. Well, I didn't get to taste the uh, or pre-taste it before it went into keg, but when it's done carbonating, oh yeah, it's on. Yeah, because why? Father's Day. Yes, Father's Day. Yes, and I am a father, and I'm still like annoyed at Father's Day this year. So annoyed. Why? What day of the week is it? Hmm? Hmm, loyal listeners? What day of the week is it? It's Monday. What day do we broadcast? Sunday, but no. Father's Day. Someone had to go out. Did, didn't hear you me a look. No, like, and what day was Mother's Day this year? Look, dude. 
that, 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 didn't, that didn't have a broadcast on it. <laughs> yeah, but that's Mother's Day, dude. Okay, let's let's think about this here. All right. So here's what I was talking with my mother last night. I was like, here's the problem with these Father's Day, Mother's Day things. All right. You ready for this, folks? This, it's this all marketing. It's all marketing. It is. It's all, they're, they're Hallmark holidays, and that's fine. I don't mind that. But here's the deal. Mother's Day. Mother's Day, we go out to dinner so we don't make mom cook. You know, it's a little bit archaic because really that whole separation, gender role, that's see, that has gone on. by the wayside. I cook every bit as much as my wife cooks now, and I do as much cleaning. At least I feel I do. She probably doesn't. You know, we're not hunter-gatherers anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's no man goes into the field and wife stays hey, man, go feel, go feel. raises the children. That doesn't happen nearly as much anymore. But my point being, Mother's Day, we go out to dinner and we appreciate moms. Father's Day, fathers appreciate moms taking them out to dinner. So we're still appreciating moms. Oh, I took, I took the family out to dinner. Oh, even better. So you <laughs> took them out to dinner on Father's Day. Yeah, and we met with my in-laws and had dinner all together, oh. you know. Okay. Okay. We should have brewed. I'm not. And yet, here we are. <laughs> here we are, bro. Right. Was it good? Why did you go to? Why did you go so far away? We went out back. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we don't have one of those here. No, we don't have much in this little town. In this little what? Town, you know what I mean? Are you kidding? We yeah. have we have homebrew though. That's what's. We have agave, and I hear they wash the plates at least every other day. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, uh, agave is actually pretty good. I, I agree. Oh yeah. I I, I it's been a while, but. I'll uh, grab a guy for work, you know, lunch at work sometimes. Wendy really likes their mole. Yeah. Like she, she wore, like we when we go to different Mexican restaurants, and there are a lot of them, right? Which is really weird since we're on the other side of the country from Mexico, but there's so many of them here. But she will often, she she tests the mole. She's like, that's like the, that's like the litmus test for her. Yep, yeah. it really is. And she's like, she tried to get a recipe, they didn't give it to her. Like you're gonna have to make your own. I'm just going to get our timers ready. There you go. There you are. So I'll set the first one for 30 minutes. So I actually had a good Father's Day, too. That's good. My wife, she made she made your favorite meal, right? Yeah, she made creamy chicken enchiladas, which are some white person's idea of Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, they're, they are great. They are really good. But I'm just like eating this thing. It's like, this is not Mexican. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We like it. It's super delicious. Cream cheese and Mexican rice and, of course, chicken. Mm. And enchilada sauce and cheddar cheese. And it's, it's, it's one of those foods that will kill you. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it must have tasted really good. Then. Well, yeah, that's the point. You know, all the foods that are great will kill you. It's like, oh, this is wonderful. I love to eat it all the time. You'll only live another three years. I know, right? Ah, I better not eat that every day. Here, have your Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, there's only one way to eat Brussels sprouts. Really? Smothered in cheese. <laughs> well, I actually, good. I actually don't mind Brussels sprouts. I do like them. Like sautéed or not, some sort of buttery garlic. Yeah, sauce type yeah. There is there is a sauce. Yeah, it's, it's like sauté like that. Brussels sprouts don't. Bother it was really me. good actually. I like I like them with the cheese sauce on them too. You do know that the Brussels sprouts that we eat today are one of the original GMOs. Really? Oh yeah, absolutely. The Brussels sprout industry, original Brussels sprouts, literally they they tasted bad. Mm -hmm. I mean that whole thing. I did not know that. And so the entire Brussels sprout industry, they worked really hard on. You know, like, like combining and making hybrids of oh, Brussels yeah, sprouts, right. and their whole goal was to make a better taste of Brussels sprout. <laughs> so the Brussels sprouts we get today actually do taste better than the Brussels sprouts of say 1920. Okay, interesting. Didn't know that. I mean, it's not like Monsanto GMO type stuff, but you know, you got to be careful with that whole GMO conversation because, because. You know, we have been doing GMOs for forever, you know? Right. It's like got a Buff Orpington chicken and a Russian Orlock chicken, and you breed them together, and you get this other breed, and it does this and that the other. That's like most of your chickens that, you know, like for backyard chicken flocks or stuff, <clears throat> most of them have Leghorn. There is a breed of chicken called Leghorn, yeah, just like Foghorn Leghorn, except the chicken's <laughs> not roosters. But they're prolific layers, you know, like 
365 or more eggs per year, which is that's, really amazing. Chickens, most that's a chickens. Lot of things come out of chickens. Yep, that's a lot of pooping of eggs. But most chickens don't lay an egg every day. You know, oh, gotcha. they'll lay like they'll lay like Monday, Tuesday, and then they won't lay an egg on Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and they won't lay an egg. They take days off. <laughs> but the Leghorn breed, that's just those popping. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the Leghorn breed really, really lays a lot of eggs. So a lot of your breeds, they have the Leghorn breed in there to increase their egg production. Gotcha. So yeah, we've been doing GMO for years. Well, I mean, it goes back millennia. To, I think it goes. Yeah, I would say it goes back since agriculture, man. Things just, you know, since the dawn of agriculture, this things have been mixed and mixed and mixed and mixed. I, I, I understand like a lot of the stuff we have today is nothing like it was. We'll just say a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as like, I mean, the similarities, of course, but. A lot of just, for lack of a better term, you know, just inbreeding and mixing of vegetables and grains and things, you know. Well, particularly, particularly in your animal world. Right. I mean, there are breeds that were pretty much invented. You know, like well, the dogs were. They were experiments, man. You know. Yeah. It's just like, what happens if I breed this dog and that dog? This dog's really strong, but he's dumb as a rock. This dog like is smart, you know, but. You know, he's really wimpy and just gets killed by anything. What happens if I breed them together? Oh, look, I have a really wimpy, dumb dog. Well, that didn't work well. <laughs> Let's try again. And it's weird, you know. Sometimes, sometimes they'll use a male of one with a female of the other, and that's the difference, right? You know, like mules. Mules are mules are a they're a stud horse and a donkey mare. And it's always that way. It's it's not a don it's not just a donkey and a horse and you just mix them randomly. No, it's specific, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's weird. I guess part of that's just because donkeys are short and horses are not. And it'd be hard for a donkey stallion to get up there. You know, thinking of the the mechanics of it all. Sure, sure. And it'd be a little weird to build ramps. <laughs> it would be weird. This is my new patent, my breeding ramp. <laughs> Okay, so this episode went really well. Hey, what are we drinking, Steve? <laughs> well, this particular brew that's in our glasses is from Ten Barrel Brewing. You should go grab a can. Yeah, grab a can. I was gonna hit my head. <laughs> Ten Barrel Brewing Company, which I believe are out of, out of Oregon. I don't know. I didn't use my glasses. They're out of Bend, Oregon. Here's the can, if you can see that. That's good. That's good. And the style, it's an IPA, but it's called Nature Calls. It's a six and a half percent ABV, so it's not terribly strong, but just I think the right the right mix is hazy and not too hoppy. I don't feel like I'm drinking a Christmas tree on this one. So. No, you know what? This taste, it's uh, you know, it's kick. This is you know mirror pond, right? By yeah. shoots. Yeah. Similar, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's about that strong. And Mirapon doesn't call itself an IPA. No, I think it's just called a regular pale ale. A pale ale. Yeah. Yeah, I've had, I've had my share of Mirapon. I like it. It's okay. Definitely worth drinking. You know, oh, it's yeah. not boring, which I mentioned that our Cascade Ale is kind of boring. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But we it's, didn't know. We never made that one, though. So. It's true. Well, that's the thing. It's like we just kind of. See, and that's the thing, though, is we look at these. We should like, like give me the uh, give me the uh, recipe. You know, see, this is what we need to work for. This is our goal, Steve. Our goal. Well, it's your goal. It's like we need to know what happens when you do half a pound of Crystal 80 Carapils in Munich. Right. It's like, what does that mean? Right. You know, what does? I don't know all that stuff yet either. Right. No, so. Well, like Centennial and Cascade hops, right? So this is Cascade at two minutes. So two minutes is not. I mean, it's only two minutes. Right. It's not that's, a lot of time. No, know. those are going to be your aroma hops, so it's just going to. But this right. have, but back in deck does not usually have a hoppy smell, though. You know. Right. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it should. But my point is, is like so, and we used Cascade hops in that Cascade right. Pale Ale. It was called a Cascade Pale Ale. Right? Yeah, they're they're like the most common most common hops in America, you know. And so maybe they're just a really chilled out, relaxed hop, you know? Yeah, I don't know what their hot ass like hop asses and stuff are on those, but that's that factors into when you choose your hops and where what time you put them in, based well, on of course. what you're trying to achieve, you know what I mean? Right. 
And the and the sooner you put them in, the less aroma and flavor you're going to get. More bitter in effect. More bitter, yeah. yeah. It's more bitter. Yeah. That's why you know apparently the centennials and certain hops are of course designed for bittering. It's like well you yeah. can throw no. this in. Yeah. You wouldn't, why would you do that? You should yeah. use it at this point. Yeah. And other yeah. hops are better for the you know the center time frame of the boil, and the other hops are better for the near the end. You know, right. what you're trying to achieve. Like the citra hops, which it would be just be dumb to use them as a bitter again. Yeah, because you're going to boil all that citra away you know, yeah. all the time. It's like you're not going to do it. But anyways, it'd just be, these are things I want to know more about. Well, that's where that, that book I have is explains all that stuff. And there's some interesting charts and tables in there that kind of help you understand what each kind of grain does, your specialty grains and all that, and what, what you're trying to achieve with it, you know what I mean? So I'm an experiential I like to experience. Like we can literally, you're actually encouraging me to read, which I'm a good reader, but I don't do it. Very we well. can literally do this and just go any, any, any mo, and just kind of see where the the fingers land and grab those kind of grains and just document everything because it's gonna be strictly experimental. Hey, we did good with that one. We documented right, right. pretty well. And then just you know, I mean, there's only one thing to document. Write everything, <laughs> write everything down on how much we use of what, and then. See how it comes out at the end. Of course, it can always be, you don't want to be too round about it because some grains are just not going to melt. You know I mean? You're going to not want to use certain things together. Yeah, I know. And that's where, and that's where, you know, it's like, you know, learn from the mistakes of others. Right. You're not going to live long enough to make them all yourself. Right. I mean, that's, that makes sense. And that's so, yeah, the whole I mean, reading up on things. I mean, if we sort of ruined when we were three, we'd probably be, we'd probably learn a lot by, the, by now. That's what, you know, such a curse to be born in America. <laughs> If we'd have been born in Germany, we would have been brewing by weird I know, right? Hey. Uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> to America. <laughs> so in any case, that would just be interesting. So we know what Mac and Jack tastes like, of course. So Yeah. And then you've got the malt extracts and stuff. There's probably not a bar in this area that doesn't serve it, you know what I mean? Nope. You can actually buy a by, there's a convenience store down by the Napa where I work, and you can buy growlers of Mac and Jack. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, one of my friends, you, you can, can also buy 22 ounce cans of Hurricane, huh. which is makes Coors Light taste like fine beer. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it's, it's like, you know, Mad Dog 2020, move down a few rungs on the ladder and you've reached Hurricane. Wow, this so, is this what is, is this? Eighty cents a can or something? I don't know. <laughs> not not to be disparaging against a class of people, but it's what the homeless people drink a lot. Because it's affordable, food. apparently. <laughs> yeah, and you can get drunk off of it. Yeah, you know that and that's what it's for. It's not for enjoying. No, it. no, it's, it's for getting blasted. It's like your sole point of drinking that is to get blasted, right? With, with without spending any money as possible. Exactly. Exactly. Money, you know, which which we don't do anymore, on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it happens. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're right. Stick around to the end of the episode. You'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, I so I don't like to go out and get blasted and, like, do dumb stuff. But I like to put my beers down while I'm working on my computer, you know, playing some games sure. or whatever, you know. Well, you know that's biblical. You have this back, by the way. Did you know that? Did you know that? It says right there, I think it says wine, but it says wine to cheer the spirits. Right. And that's, I mean, that is very clearly talking about getting drunk, getting buzzed, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe not, I mean, drunkenness is considered downright sinful, you know, that's, but that's like drunkenness, you know, like being an alcoholic or something like that, you know, but yeah. Well, you can, you can, sorry to get all weird on you, you can actually be an alcoholic and only have one drink a year. Because it's, it's alcoholism isn't defined by the amount you drink. It's defined by your ability to stop after maybe beer or, or wine, whatever you drink. Because true alcoholism is a dependence on it, not not because I abused it and drank you know 10, 20 beers, but the fact is I could stop drinking until I reached that. that that's the, kind of the difference between alcoholism. You know what I mean? When there's when there's actually a dependency on it, not not just because you drink a lot. You know what I mean? You can and you can you can drink 30 beers. And not be an alcoholic because you're not dependent on the alcohol and you just drink a shitload of beer, excuse me. You know? Family <laughs> show. <laughs> hey, PG. Right. So, I mean, I mean, where I learned that was when I was a dabble. You know? I, and, and there is a drug and alcohol program advisor for. So, what you're saying is we're alcoholics. 
No, because I don't depend on on the beer. You know, what I mean, my, my I don't have a physical dependence on it. Breeze. So I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> you, so you, think, you, you really feel you have a physical dependence on beer? Wow, you are going so serious today. <laughs> no, I do not. Oh, man, I love it. <laughs> well, so do I. I love the flavor. You know, the be- the buzz is a side effect, but I don't rely on it. Though. I gotta tell you, I really like brewing it. I really do. This this is fun. You know, oh, yeah, definitely have. Yeah. I, I kind of like the whole beer culture because you know there is there's a beer culture now that is growing up not just in America but in the world with all the microbrews and people brewing their own and craft oh, beers. Yeah. There's this whole culture around beer and it's really cool. And what's cool now is it's it's not this esoteric thing anymore. It's people share their knowledge, they share their experience. I mean, you, you get some of the hoity toys out there that don't want to play nice in the sandbox, but you know what? We just ignore the, those types. They won't yeah. share their recipe if you want to change it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, any, any recipe I ever come up with, if someone comes to me and says, hey, can I do this? I'm going to tell them, yeah, go for it, man. Let me know, let me know how it works. You know what I mean? I would like to add calamari to that. You're weird. Well, well go ahead. But let me know how it comes out. You, you know? don't want to taste it? I'm not sure. Um, well, a little bit. <laughs> We're being specific because one of our, our, our friends uh, told us a story where he was asking another brewer some questions about, hey, what if I altered the recipe this, this way or that? And the other guy just got all bent out of shape about it, like, oh, how dare you? You know, but whatever. We're not like that. I, I would, I'd like to think the majority of the home brewing community is not like that either. Everybody's willing to share information and stories and, you know, and just twist it, turn it, make it happen. Pass, pass, pass along to each other how we do things, you know? Yeah, well, so, seriously, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move these bottles because I think the heat's was what's making them pop. Yeah, probably. It would be a shame to melt. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. 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 So yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's. I don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about ah. people being hoity doities and stuff. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. But anyways, yeah, the whole culture. The whole homebrew culture and even the. I'll be back. <laughs> he spelled something on himself. <laughs> so I really enjoy the entire beer culture that has kind of grown up. I think it's really cool. Because um, there is. There's a whole culture about it. And now it's not just it's not just getting drunk or just like, oh, I want a cold brew and you grab for your Budweiser or your Yingling or whatever your beer of choice is from a macro brew. But now there's this whole thing about where wine people have had that for forever with the whole, he's upstairs, I can hear him. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> wine people have had that whole, there's this whole thing about wines and, and now beer people have it too and beer is so much better than wine, oh my goodness. I mean, we're, you can't even you can't even describe how much better beer is than wine. <laughs> Sorry, wine people. <laughs> so I think it's cool. And now I'm sitting here spitballing because he spilled something on himself. He's gonna come back with a brand new shirt. I'll be a new man. <laughs> Do something. Oh, let's check the temperature on that. I don't know if he's hit the timer yet. Who's sitting there? So any of the any of you who actually brew beer know we're going for the whole 150 to 160 mark. And there's 150 right there, so okay. we can start the timer. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. start the timer and bring the point down a little bit. Kind of so control the things a little bit. Did you already hit it? Uh, I did not. I did not. Yeah, it is fine. It already cleared. All right, timer is on. Sweet. So, so yeah, the whole beer well, culture thing is really cool. Yeah. You know, and I just changed my shirt. Yes, <laughs> I noticed. What did was there just something? Which water? water? Oh. So much for that. It went my mouth too. That's what I was like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that's gross. Yeah. So <laughs> Sorry, that yeah. squirty bottle on top of the fridge fell, and I guess it wasn't tightened down. And... Oh man. So, and that was your Zimmergy shirt too. It was. It was. Huh? Wouldn't be a brewer shirt without a bleach stain on it, I guess. I guess not. Yeah. So 
So I'll have to get a new new synergy shirt if it gets ruined. We should get we should get matching and then we could be like twinsies. Twinsies, yeah, that was really bad. Let's ignore it. Let's pretend that last one. So time. brewing culture. <laughs> yeah, it's brewing culture. So anyways, it's really cool. Um what are you gonna talk about? I got I got a cool thing to share with everybody and you oh, go for it. After the, because we've discussed how we need music for our broadcast. Like, it'd be cool if we had an opening scene, oh, right? yeah, like, yeah. opening music. That'd be cool. And then we would still screw up the man getting, even though <laughs> our opening was five minutes long instead of 10 seconds. We still wouldn't be ready, I'm sure. But it doesn't matter. So, yeah, man. So, I've been studying a lot about beards. And there's going to be, this is going to be fun, dude. Oh, i got to open up. Uh, I gotta find the uh, song. Where is it? Where is it? So this is just a three chord wang a banger, right? I mean, it's not as far as like artistic stuff. It's not super. I'm not pushing the bounds of music here, right? This no, is, it's still you're just so kind of experimenting. Right? Well, what I'm Sounder. saying. No, 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 not that, not that. Not just, what I'm saying is, is like so. For example, Beethoven showed up, and there was classical music, and then Beethoven introduced different harmonic ways of working with things, and he just did things with sounds that changed what people thought music should be. Ah. Right? Classical music was fairly easy to understand. Well, and you could go further back. So there was the Baroque period. Baroque, basically, the definition of Baroque is highly ornamented. And that's where you get the whole oh, 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 oh. Yeah. music college graduate by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you get all those those notes, one syllable, you know, country music has nothing over Baroque when it comes to singing Oh, with the intervals? Yeah. yeah, and you know, the whole machi heart, you know, people like to make fun of country music for that because it's like, if you can turn a one-syllable word into a 15-syllable word, you might be listening to country, right? <laughs> so that's a joke. But seriously, Baroque music did it long before that. You know, folks like Henry Purcell and Bach and stuff. I've sang some Henry Purcell, you know, not that horrible hallelujah thing that I did, but like really working it. And there really was. It's ah, 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 Oh. And then you do it again. And it was all decorations and fanciness, 100% fanciness. That's what it really was it was. And if you've ever listened to Bach, some of it can get pretty deep. You know, it, it, it just gets thick. Like some of his fugues. Oh, yep, really. I will fix that. <laughs> ah, you better fix it from the outside because those are hot. Yeah, that's fine. And I don't have a hole. That's right. I don't have my. There we go. I don't have my sweatshirt to just pull the sleeves down. Right, no, no worries. Because it's freaking hot out. Jeez. We fixed it. No, so, it was a hot day today. So in any case, if you listen to a lot of box music, or Vivaldi, or Telemann, or Handel, any of those guys from the Baroque period, you know, the music is super thick. You know, ding, 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 And at the same time, there's another part. Ding, 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 ding. And they're all layered on top of each other, and it sounds good, right? If you like that sort of stuff, right? right. I know you like Baroque music. I prefer the, that. I like the Baroque period and the Classical period for. Which is so weird because the Classical period was an absolute rejection of Baroque music. I don't know. I just like the sound better. I like the way. No, I, don't, I don't care for the Romantic period. Some of the early, we're some not of, friends anymore. Some of the early 20th century stuff is okay. So I'm not Schoenberg. Some of it's okay. Some of it gets a little abstract and weird, but as far as this, the sound style, I prefer those older periods. And I think oh, the Baroque period, the Baroque period was what was after the Renaissance. Right. And I think they discovered so much new discovery in music. That's why it's so, so noty. You know what I mean? Because they were just like, oh, look what we can do, you know? Well, you know, the thing is, I mean, so there's certain things. So the harpsichord, right, which is a keyboard, the predecessor to the piano, right? Did you know Bach didn't like the piano? I didn't know that. Yeah. Now, of course, most of us think, oh, Bach must have loved the piano. Bach didn't like the piano. I mean, what has happened is modern people have transcribed Bach's harpsichord music oh, onto oh, the piano. Onto the piano, yeah. Right. Bach, he, he preferred the harpsichord. Although he did make, he made a trip to, uh, it was to see some dude, probably some prince or king or some something. Some dead dude. Yeah, well, yes. 
Yeah, I would hope so. Socrates. Yes. But a toy a maybe, a bit. maybe a little bit later. The point the point being too much, too much. The point being is that uh, he went to investigate this new invention called the piano. But yeah, he didn't like the piano all that much. You know, he, he just didn't like the way it was. He liked the harpsichord. Right. But the thing about so they had the harpsichord, but one of the things about the Baroque time is that in the renaissance written music was just starting to really be developed they had these things called noems or nooms n-e-u-n-e-s oh, i've seen the word and it was it was a very crude and you know uh what's the word incipient or the word that's just become just coming into being i don't know what's that I can't think of the word doesn't matter but it's the very beginning form of music, and in that music, it was all about intervals. So, like, the your your starting note could be maybe whatever, and then the next figure on the page didn't say this is a C sharp or an F or a G. Right. What it said was this note is a third away from your starting note. It was kind of the whole system was built on relative pitch. Talking a little bit out of my knowledge base, by the way, at this point, you know, Benny, uh, definitely out of the beer realm now. <laughs> well, yeah, but hey, we don't always talk about beer, and it's a freaking three-hour show. We gotta fill it with something. Yeah, I'm gonna feel <laughs> the heat it's, it's too hot. Okay. It's still on fire. Yeah. No, that's fine. Right. We have an aiming flame now. We can turn it back on fairly easily. Yeah. You have pot holders. Yeah, we should probably oh, get some. Of those. Okay. okay. So in any case, because we're talking about the the point is. The original written music didn't mean the same as the written music they have today. But right. by the time Bach came along, written music was a thing. Kind of standardized. Yeah, right. it was starting to really solidify. There were some different things, like they used a lot of figured bass, so it'd just be one note and then a series of numbers, and the, the musicians of the time knew what those numbers meant, and right, they right. reacted from there. There's a lot more improv to Baroque music than people. People think it's all written down. It's like, no, that didn't actually. That whole concept of writing every single thing down and the composer controlling every aspect, that was a lot more towards Beethoven and the Romantic period. You know, Wagner took it to level. Wagner, and maybe Mahler. One of the jokes about Mahler, and I don't know if you know who Gustav Mahler is, but he was one of the big names. And one of the jokes about him was there was more words on his music than there was music. <laughs> There's all notes on just Yeah, it's like, now you played this one exactly like this, not too strong, and I needed to get it. He, just, he, was, he really wanted to control it so tightly, which is the opposite philosophy for me. I write a skeleton. It's like, yeah, right around mezzo forte, play these notes, most of them, if you don't mind. And thought I saw somebody walking by. You may have. I did not see that. Anyway, so that's the whole. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe Riley. So that's the whole thing. Um, anyways, all the way back to Baroque and how you like Baroque and classical, you feel like those are kind of your bailiwicks. And it's like, so the Baroque music was before the Enlightenment, right? What, however, the Enlightenment was. Sorry, I took so long. I had to go to Lisa so she put olive oil through my hair because I got tree stuff in it. Yeah, I do that all the time, you know, dash my head in olive oil because I've been snuggling really? with trees. Yes, tree and tree. <laughs> why why are you snuggling with trees? Because I like trees. Trees oh. need hugs. No, trees need Trees need hugs. They don't need hugs. The they whole hugger thing is a pejorative euphemism. It's, it's not real. Trees, yeah, trees I have hug. oily hair. Okay. <laughs> have fun. Thanks. I'll sleep better knowing. <laughs> Most professional broadcast this side of the Columbia, right? Don't most. lock us in, please. Thank you. <laughs> now the question is, did she just unlock it or relock it? No. We can still get out, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Is that way. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, all the way around. Well, we're all in any case, place. what's what's interesting is so the Baroque period, you know, religion and mystery and the world was still this magical place kind of deal, right? And so the Enlightenment came along, and the Enlightenment rejected all that. And the basic idea is that the rational human mind, that's everything. And if you can't conceive of it with your mind, if it doesn't make sense, then you just reject it, right? You know, maybe it still needs to be studied, but you don't give it any sort of status, right? 
And so that started to be reflected in the music, which is why me personally, Mozart is kind of boring. It's like, and da 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 Yay, repeat for six minutes. All right. I'm sorry. I should not hack on Mozart. He was one of the greatest musicians ever. Not as good as Bach or Beethoven, but still pretty good. Yeah, well, I, I definitely enjoy Beethoven. Yeah. yeah. But as far as like, no, I get it. mainstream or manic period, it's just, I don't care if that style of music, man. Well, you know, and that's that's a thing. I mean, it depends on. I don't hate it, but just say that. I just don't prefer it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and realistically, you know, heavy metal would fit very well. The, the like, I think, you know, Megadeth, right? We're going to the heavy metal. It would fit very well in, like, the classical period. Right. Because it's not, it's not a complex music form. I mean, it's loud and it's lots of guitars and raw emotional raw. but as far as the complexity of it no and the and the guitar oh, riffs depends on the band but well sure i mean depends do you want to call do you want to call dream theater heavy metal or do you no, want to call them progressive they're, rock? they're, they're progressive metal i'd say progressive metal well know? who do you think of as a like complex metal band you know more metal than i do man in fact all the metal i know is because of you oh uh, well Hard because you have so many subgenres, man. But yeah, I understand. I don't, I'm, not think, name, think I'm not going to try to name this particular band, but you're right. The majority of metal, especially the classic like '80s metal sound, yeah, it wasn't super complex. That's like it's three, cool. maybe it four was, chords. It was and yeah, two chords, and really defined pattern. Typically four, four time, and they would repeat the same patterns over and over. You know, so it wasn't all right. that complex, you know. But even and even the guitar solos, I was watching a video by uh, Rick Beato the other day, and he was talking about who he considers guitar virtuosos. He knows a thing or two. He's been around for a bit, even if you don't know his name. Just take my word for it. He's been oh, around. The guy's. I wasn't you know, really. <laughs> yeah. He is credible, and he was saying that he doesn't really consider most of your heavy metal guys virtuosic, and he says because most of what they do is just really, 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 really fast patterns. Right. And you that's know? true. It's just, it's all little box patterns, man. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's just a it's like, all right, so now we're on the E major. Don't jump it, don't jump it, don't. And now I play this. Now we're on this one. Don't jump it, don't jump it, don't. I mean, they're certainly talented and they're fast. And they, you know, but yeah, I know you're saying no, like the complexity wise, it's just, it's not there in the same sense as like, you know, a uh, Baroque period. Right. Know, well, you know. well, and just something, you know, like with, with any sort of like, like, like the Romantic period was much more complex probably than the Baroque period. Okay. What with its harmonic patterns and uh, stuff, because, you know, even in the Baroque period, you kind of had the set of things that you did, and the Romantic period just blew it away. And then, of course, the 20th century period shattered everything and illustrated to everyone that actually what had come before was pretty good and maybe we should go back there. Yeah. And of course, when I'm talking about 20th century stuff, I'm not talking about just like Copeland or Gershwin or Berlin, because those guys were 20th century. Think about them, like 1900s, right. you're, you're 20th century. Yeah. Most 20th century music sounded good. You know, but we're talking about like the Arnold Schoenbergs and the the Veberns and the Bairds, who they went for that atonal stuff and they right, really kind of weird. twisted it out to the yeah, edge of the thing. Sounds, yeah. And it was it just got, you know, it's like, eh, nope, that's not music anymore. You mm -hmm. know, I understand the academic idea behind it, and some of those guys. Forget a uh, bow check. I will tell you, you should watch. You should. I think you actually played some of that pretty one time. And it is out there. Out there, there, yeah. The thing about it's like you're like trying to show off, you know. So that's why I took it. Well, they were. Like, and, yeah, I get it. You're skilled. Uh, somebody, I forget. Maybe it was Barry or Baber. There was three of them. There was there was Arnold Schoenberg, and he was kind of the he's the guy that kicked off the whole atonal or the liberation of dissonance. I forget exactly what he. What he termed it, he didn't. He didn't like the term atonal, but he kicked it off. And then he had two. You could call them disciples. And there's uh, Albert and Babe, his Weber and Baird. Anyways, that's their last name. They're all German. They called themselves the Second Vienna School. Okay. We're going way away yeah. from beer. But yeah, anyways, let me yeah, finish. Yeah. So they all thought about this. And these composers drink beer, so here we're about to They have probably them. did. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that makes them okay. We will forgive them for many sins because they like beer. They were German, so they had beer. Yeah, it's 
to your DNA. If you're German, it's in your DNA, probably. Probably, right? <laughs> Maybe they didn't drink beer, and that was their problem. Ooh. In any case, so they went way out to the edges of what was what you could really consider music. But most 20th century music sounded good, you know, and it's just. But the harmonic complexities in there, that's where you get the things where you just jump to chords that you're just like, why did you go to that? Would you do that? And of course, jazz took it even further, right? Yeah. You know, and jazz, jazz is interesting because <coughs> they have a bunch of flavor chords is what they have. The chords themselves are pretty solid, but then they'll just add little things. It's almost Baroque. They add these little things onto them. Now, the nice thing about jazz, though, is it's not just patterns. I mean, everything is patterns to an extent, right? right? You've got your licks, your bag of tricks that you do. But still, a lot of it is still true improvisation. They are thinking and they're putting things together and making new melodies right there on the spot. You know? And then you've got, like, your David Gilmore, which I admit I am not super familiar with Gilmore's guitar work. But from what I've read about him, he was pretty virtuosic. You know, he didn't feel the need to just cram the whole song full of notes. And if you listen to Pink Floyd, obviously, you know, oh yeah, it, it's not a whole bunch of sweeping guitar through their solos. You know, so uh, he was he was and he didn't you know, he didn't have to play fast. He, he was able to play at a comfortable speed, no pun intended, but hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I caught it. Thank you. But, um, we'll be here all week. Well, I, I think that's one of the greatest solos, man. The pump to so it's just like, dude. <laughs> yeah. I should probably listen to that later tonight. You should, you should. Yeah. But so, but overall, yeah, his, his guitar playing is just, it could be virtuosic. It's just, you know, it, but it's not speed metal, you know, that's what makes it good, you know? Right. Which I love speed metal. And don't, yeah. You know? I, mean, I really do. I love that sound. I like the tones that they yeah. use in those guitars. And when they get going, and it's like, ah, this is so cool. It's like, okay, 10 minutes, I'm bored. <laughs> That's something else. So that it starts to sound all the same, though, unfortunately. Well, you know what the thing is, is that it all does. It's like, that's why I roll the radio dial so much. Yeah, yeah same thing. You know, I listen to the classical music, but after a while, it's just like, oh. And now we're going to hear this wonderful concerto that sounds just like all well, the other concertos yeah. that I've listened to. Yeah, same and that's why it's why I bounce around musical musical genres, you know. You know, my, my radio dial in the truck, yeah, I have, you know, I've got rock stations, I have, you know, classical stations, I have the, the blues jazz station, mm-hmm. you know, and then I have my CDs. Yeah, I still have a CD player. <laughs> I'm ancient. I have a scan button. <laughs> scan. I use the scan <laughs> button like you would not leave and just let it spin. <laughs> right? They're, you know, most folks are probably syncing their phone up to their radios these days and they have their playlists and stuff. No, not me. I'm still put CDs in. Yeah, I like <laughs> CDs are cool and stuff. Well, you know, the thing is, is that you have it yeah. as long as you have a CD player. That's like, so I have a lot of downloaded sheet music right now, you know, that I paid for and stuff. I was like, you know, I need to print this. Ten minutes left, by the way. Because if the power goes out. Oh, yeah. You're, you're screwed on that one. Yeah. You know, if this little box that we're broadcasting out of dies, it's like, ah, I just lost $50 worth of sheet music. <laughs> That's a bummer. You should definitely back it up to a, another driver, a thumb or something. I do. I do. I didn't do that. It cost me $1,000 to get everything off of a hard drive that took a leap off the table because that little magnet thing that's supposed to let go, right? That's a safety thing. Yeah, yeah it didn't let go. <laughs> my foot, my shin, cable, plug in. To the floor. <laughs> thousand dollars later, got a bunch of family pictures back. That's terrible. Still a thousand dollars, man. Yeah, but it was worth it. There was there was some there was also some really good music that was. Ah. Oh, that did so well. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we were getting down the low end, so I just wanted to make sure that we need another beer. We do. We do. Uh, you want to go back to the hoppy pack? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and grab whatever's, whatever's clever, man. Well, the thing on top is bust a line. Okay. So there we go. Bust a line, huh? Bust a line, which anytime I think of bust a line, I think home, the Disney movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. With, uh, the alien the boom. Boom. Yeah. yeah, so. All right, bust a line. There it is. 6.2 ABV. Made by Red Hook. 
out of Seattle? Out of Seattle. Yeah. We buy local as much as we can. Even though Seattle is not a certain local, but close, close enough. Close I mean, enough. sometimes you just gotta say your state. Your state is local. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Because anything we buy here from a company that's that's here, it's gonna support the state's economy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it kind of flows around. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No! Dude, what happened to you? <laughs> skills, skills. Apparently, this my pour was not as effective as it could have, could have been. been. So definitely not hazy. I can uh, see you. Oh yeah, this is this glass. <laughs> not a hazy IPA. Kind of a lighter IPA, mm -hmm. which is fine. Is it warm out? Like hot summer is almost here i think summer is what tomorrow and this is this isn't this the uh what's today today's the the, the, the summer no this, is also. The, no this is the official first day oh of today is the official first day yeah okay. june 21st so it is the longest day, day of the year then nice i, I couldn't remember today or tomorrow was the first day of summer so we are officially in summer there are a lot of ipas in this store and you're thinking why one more but this one is full of lime and sure to change your mind. So just don't stand there. Bust a lot. Okay. Wow. What the <laughs> hell, man? What the hell? Stick with brewing beer, because lyrics are not your bailiwick. Speaking wow. of lyrics, speaking of lyrics. I'm glad you had to say forte, because so many people use that incorrectly. Really? It's not forte, it's fort, actually. Fort. Fort. You don't pronounce the A like in the French style, you know what I mean? In the Italian style? Or Kyle, whatever, you know, or the Canadian style. A, really? Right? Yeah, it's pronounced fort. Fort. When you're talking about that kind of thing, like, oh, that's my, when people say, oh, that's my forte, or that's not my forte, that it's been been used wrong. I mean, there is a, culturally, there is a secondary, you know, pronunciation, which is forte, but the actual true pronunciation is just fort. From? From which language? I don't know, English? French? I think it's French, actually. That one has to be French. I, think and I, would, I would totally, I would totally, I'm amazed that we pronounce the R and the T because of French. Right. Because well, in Italian, well, in Italian, it is forte. Well, you're right. Because you're, you're talking, you're talking about, right. If you're and talking means, about the music, making it louder, yeah, forte is correct. Mm -hmm. But being like good at something or familiar with something, that's your fort, not your forte, actually. No, that, that's the other point I was going to bring up. Italian, yeah, you're right. It is. Let's go with Bailiwick. So, yeah, I, I, mean, I didn't under, I didn't mispronounce that, no. I don't think. No, 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 I'm not saying you mispronounce it. I mean, everybody uses it. I use it. It's just, you know, it's just one of those stupid little things. It's like you kind of peel the onion. You're like, oh, we've been doing it wrong all this time. Just like with um, acronyms, you know. Right, an acronym actually has to spell a word to be considered right. an acronym. The initials of whatever the acronym is, yeah, have to spell a real word to be a true acronym. Otherwise, it's just initials. Initials. Yeah. Okay, got it. You know, and, and, and again, it's one of those things that, like, we've just kind of gone with it the whole time, or even though if it doesn't spell anything, oh, the acronym is just because it has multiple initials, people just kind of call it an acronym, even though it's truly not an acronym. Kind of those, you know, one of those dumb linguistic things, you know? No, I get it. What are we at, by the way? Are we done? No, we still have, how about, we got five and a half minutes left. Oh, all right. And we're doing, we're doing good with that. Oh, yeah. We're like spot on. We're like, and we haven't gone over 160 the whole time. Right now it's like 107. That's because you are turning the game yeah, yeah. on. That's cool. That's fine now. No, I think it's coming up just fine. We've, been, we've kept our temperature range. Good deal. So, anyways, so anyways, we, we are gonna have an intro song at some point. I'm writing an intro song. That was the whole point of that tangent was to talk about the intro song. And we went way out there. <laughs> Half an hour just to get all the way back. And I just wanted to explain that it's just going to be a three chord bang of it. Right, oh, right, right. It's kind of like, uh, well, actually, so I listened to a lot of Dropkick Murphys on this one. I actually didn't have to listen to a lot of Dropkick Murphys because the moment I conceived the song, I knew that was the sound I wanted. Right. right. This one, right? The Irish it's on the, song. <laughs> yes, it's, and it's on the upcoming beer album, which I have three, three songs. I only need two more, and we can make the beer album. Would that be it? Yes. Yep. 
your album. That's going to be awesome. Which is weird because most people think of an album as has a 10. An EP stands for extended play. Right. It's like, well, that doesn't sound extended, but you have to go all the way back to when they made singles. That's what they made. A side, B side. That was it. That's true. You know? So an extended play was five songs. Whoa. And then you have what we have now. And now we're back to singles. People would do singles because it's all Spotify and Pandora and stuff. Oh, yeah. Or even when they purchase music to keep, they just buy the one or two songs they like. Me, when I'm buying music online, I still buy the album. This is because that's just what I did for all those years, man. Mm-hmm. Even if I don't listen to the one song, I, I just I buy the whole album. I feel like I'm – I don't feel like I'm – and everybody's different. I get that. But I feel like I'm not fully supporting the artist unless I purchase the album. See, I like the idea of purchasing an album just because it's like, I really like that song, and I might like something else. Right, listen, exactly. I listen, I listen to the whole thing, and, and I've, I've noticed that over, over time, that as I listen to a song that I didn't like at first, the more and more I listen to it, I start to kind of realize, hey, I actually do like the song, you know? And I, I only achieve that by buying the whole album, you know? Oh, yeah, I think, and I like having the album because, you know, even though Wi-Fi is almost ubiquitous at this point, it's not 100% ubiquitous. Right. You know, and there's things, I mean, some of us, some of us actually still limit our data plans. You know, we don't have the unlimited data right here. So when we're in places where we don't have a Wi-Fi signal, it's like, God, I think maybe I'm going to play off my downloaded library, not my streaming Right. Even if you do have unlimited data, your local downloaded library is still Absolutely. You know, you're not going to get buffered. You don't get commercials. Which, by the way, what's our commercials? Because I think commercials are great. Somebody else is paying, I can enjoy it free. You mean all I have to do is deal with 30 seconds of you trying to convince me that your product is great? I can tune you out for 30 seconds, no problem. Ooh, we got a ladle. Ladle, 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 lady, you to the kitchen. To the kitchen. I was going to talk about lyrics. Go, get the ladle, get the ladle. I know, I know. Spent too much time talking about all sorts of other stuff. <laughs> Don't talk about lyrics. <laughs> Yay, tomorrow is the last day of school. Ha ha, my kids got out of school a week ago. Just saying. <laughs> Not that it's good for my kids because guess how much wood they've been splitting this week. My kids love school. They love it. <laughs> nice. Stickiness. Give me the other one. Just prepping because we're about a minute and a half left. Right, gotcha. Did you warm these up or? No, they've been out here the whole time and it's warm in here. So. Well, it is pretty warm. This should be good. It will be okay. All right. All right, there's one. That's okay. We still have a label. Oh, I don't have anywhere to put the grains. Let me get the. Yeah. That's the nice thing about play, brewing in my house. You can just chuck them in the grass. <laughs> no stickiness. We're avoiding stickiness. I hate stickiness. All right. That worked pretty good. What do you do with that? All right. I'm going to put this over here. Okay. Bring it back. I mean, cash. Oh, that's nice. How much time we got? 35 seconds. <laughs> I already killed the flame because it's got plenty of heat. Yeah, I'm sure we're good. So we find there. Once we get the heat back on this for the actual boil uh, and, and after you talk about the lyrics, I'm going to go finish up the sanitization and get all this okay. prepped. So. How bad is it bugging out, man? Was it just because I was moving back and forth in front of it? Or is oh. it still freaking out? And Because uh, my monitor in here seems pretty good. Was he saying we're getting choppy or something? Or? Yeah, that's what he was saying. He's watching on YouTube. It's possible my internet's being dumb because it happens. Well, it just it just did drop and then come back. Okay. 
Yeah, I know. The last couple weekends, I've just had kind of spotty internet. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. Hey, thank you very much, Chase. That might have been an internet thing, dude. Because the internet, the little screen over there, did say that the internet dropped to like okay, and then it's back to good now. So appreciate yeah, it. Uh, you know, the two hundred dollars I spend on my uh, service. So, gross, man. That's probably good, dude. Dude, it's going to pee for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's one thing. That's, it's, you know, that whole argument, we, we, there are people that say you should rinse that with 170 degree water to oh, make yeah. sure you get all of it out. And then, of course, our things say, don't squeeze, just take it out and be done. Now, tea bag people definitely will say, don't squeeze. Once it's done steeping, you're done. You take it out, right? All right. All right. So we got no flame going, right? No flame. Yeah, I think we can just throw it on there, get a little. Uh, I don't know. You want to do that? You know you do that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was Smells so good. You ready for ladle? Yeah, give me the ladle. You ladle. ladle. I'm not gonna ladle. You ladle. <laughs> That's a good idea because every time you ladle, I get burned. Alright, I was making sure that there was no. Difference on the not uh, one of those add this much now, right? Yeah, add so that's that doesn't add anything, just add it all at once. So, there is that whole thing, you know, the uh, yeah, there's the uh, whatever that scientific term is, the one the thing that makes bread brown and crusty oh, and stuff. I mean, there's a scientific term, and they say that a similar, you can keep stirring, or whatever. I'm just gonna shake this and then let it sit and dissolve in there. So, the concept that if you add certain sugars at certain times, well, conceivably, it could make a difference. Okay. But I just don't know. It's just like the whole debate, like, it's not like a ferocious debate. It's not enough of a debate for anybody to really care about. But just like some people rinse the grain, the, the specialty right, grains, right. and some people don't. Wow, that lightened up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely remember, like, whatever I had in the bar, it's not terribly dark, you know, amber ale. Right. You know, it should be. Do you have your knip? Yeah, but I, uh, that's, I, I, I'll just go cut it. Okay. See you in a minute. Okay, man. Okay, man. By the way, I'm sorry, Mr. Pacino, but that was the worst Hispanic accent I have ever heard in Hollywood. Ever. I don't know who told you that was good, but <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I know a lot of Hispanics. I'm married to one. <laughs> that was that was uh, that's kind of a fail. Let's just be honest. No. Oh. All right. If you want to get it, no, you want. All right. Now, do it time. Try to get it done. It's all. You're gonna get so rocky. That's it, yeah, with the with the dry mulch, man. Yeah, it always gets all frothy on this froth city. A little bit of time, see if that makes a difference. Which appears to be pretty good for us. Well, we'll see what happens when we bring it back to the boil. <laughs> right now, right?
And I got sticky. Every time. It's inevitable, man. We obviously need to do this closer to a seat. <laughs> True. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you may now watch Steve stir dry malt into the water. Because I'm going to go wash my hands. Because they're sticky. Yeah, that stuff's like molasses. It <laughs> comes out of the jars. <laughs> I'm doing this one a little bit slower just because it usually frosts up so badly. But we'll see when we apply heat to it again. What's going to happen? All right. Let's get that mixing. Go ahead and toss that for Yep. And uh, let's get right back. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and get the heat going. Alright, yeah. Woo! Flame on! Alright, okay, so now we can work up to a boil with that. Right? Nice rolling boil as usual. So in any case, we'll pitch our first hops at the 60 minute mark. I haven't got everything all, uh, all, all figured there. out. Oh, okay. But I'm pretty close, right? So we got an opening, right? Are you going to play it first? No. Oh. I don't have a guitar. Oh, I thought you record some stuff already. Right? No, no. I mean, I have little snippets and pieces chunked here and there, but gosh. the thing is, the melody is so easy that I don't even bother. I, I just, I'm writing down lyrics that fit in, you know. No, I guess so. Yeah, because like I said, it's a very simple three chord, you know, kind of like the Dropkick Murphys. Specifically, if you want to listen to the one that it kind of sounds like, listen to Going Out in Style, which is a great tune, by the way. Ah, cool. Man. I like it. In any case, so it's got, so the opening is clear. It's like over 7,000 years ago, God gave us a libation, and now this divine beverage is brewed in every nation, on every continent, except one, from far away to near. Humanity can all agree we love this thing called, and then you yell, beer! Right, okay, so there's that. And then we do one round with the guitar, and maybe the bagpipes. Ooh, or banjos. I want a banjo. I I know a bagpipe. Bagpipe player. I guess a piper. Are you right? Piper. 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 I knew a guy, but he doesn't live in the area. So yeah, well, this guy, well, he lives. He goes to my church, but yeah, he actually plays pretty well. I bet he'd play on the album too. So sure he would. Anyways, that. So verse one. So does he like beer? What? Does he like beer? Is he human? <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> does the Pope poop in the woods? Come on now. I don't know. Does he? <laughs> Mixing metaphors. Anyway. No, I know. I know. All right. Is, a, is, so, a, is, a, is, a, is there a bear with him? <laughs> so I got to tell you, I kind of had to just accept where beers were originally from because it's like Budweiser and Heineken own all the beer in the world. That's terrible. That's like two breweries own everything. That's that's antitrust level shit there, man. Well, it's Anheuser Busch InBev right. is the one, and they really do. They own so much stuff. Did you know Budweiser? Part of the competition. That's what they Budweiser were can't be sold as Budweiser in Europe, though, because there's a trademark dispute with a Czechoslovakian Budweiser. beer that has Budweiser, and they're like, nope, that's our name. Ah. So over there, it's just Bud, 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 Bud. Well, we don't drink Bud or Budweiser or Bud Light. Or uh, any of those just gonna turn my glass. fizzy <laughs> just a glass. Just a glass. <laughs> any of those fizzy yellow but that does not contain Budweiser or Bud Light. Yeah. Any of those fizzy yellow American lagers. I mean, hey, that's what you like. More power to you, but we don't we don't care for them. Well, they're just not super interesting. You know, they're still good lawnmower beers. You know, like I do like Coors Light. Yeah, it's, it's not super good interesting. interesting. For like outdoor hot days. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, of course, Coors Light. Holy. Crap. I mean, the beers we drink are definitely heavier in the stomach, on the palate, you know. Well, yeah, they're heavier on they're, they're not thirsty. <laughs> that was funny. Look, ah, foaming. Foaming. 
They're, they're not thirst quenchers so much, that's for sure. It's no, 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 no. so thirsty. Give me one of your beers. It's like you're just going to be thirsty afterwards. Here, have some water. Are you hungry as well? Because it's going to fill you up. Yeah. <laughs> both it's both. Um, anyhow, what was I talking about? Oh. Beer and beer. No, no more than this beer. And, right, yeah. so just interesting things. And there's, there's going to be some great ones. All right, so I've got more rolling around in my head. Ah. Like, there's Israeli brews, right? And it's just going to be something like, it's like, Israeli brew. This is like, who knew the Jew could brew? It's like, it's kind of, it's like, and I'm just, you know, the whole political correctness? I'm just going to throw it out the window. You know why? Because we're beer drinkers, dude. And beer drinkers don't do that it's shit. It's all in good context anyway. It's not right. It's all for fun. We love Jews. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, imagine. I don't know any. I oh, wait, you know what? I think Jews. <laughs> I only know one. I haven't talked with, I don't know her really well. Like, in fact, I don't know. She was during college, though. So. And she was really cool. She was Yemeni. She actually knew her tribe. You know, a lot of Jewish people don't know their tribe so much. You know, you know that. Well, the whole diaspora, and when, when Rome came in in 70 AD and wiped it out, I mean, it just, they destroyed so many records and stuff, you know. But she did. She knew her tribe. She's like, yeah. So she was actually from Yemen, right? Okay. She's like, I am Jewish, but my family and my whole lineage, we're down in Yemen. So, anyways, the point is, I'm not about to, uh, not about to get caught up on a whole bunch of political correctness. No, I'm gonna say, it might offend you. It's like, I don't care. Right. We're, we're here to drink beer and have fun. And... Yep. Whatever, man. You know what I mean? And it's really it's, sad. That the that context works. is not, it, it's not yeah. hateful. It's not, you know, it's not like you're. No, it's funny. It's, it's, it's funny, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's really sad that whole conversation just happened. That last five minutes. That's terrible, isn't it? That is a sad reflection on our culture. The fact that we had to have. We, that had, to have, we had to qualify everything we're talking about here. In any case, but that line's going to be in there. Because there is. There's Israeli beer. There's Iranian beer. Really? Yeah, I'm actually going to include a line about that when we're talking about some of the Arabic beers. There's Saudi Arabian beer and Iraqi beer and Iranian. Ah. Right? I'm going to. I'm this, confused on that one. It's because I know, I'm gonna talk alcohol work. was taboo in I know, you yeah, bigot. And that's going to go in the song. It's going to be a little song. How do you like that? Bigot. You I'm just, bigot. I'm just, I'm just not aware of that. I know, I know. But it's but funny, it's, I get right, it. you get the joke there? Yeah. So, the, yeah, all right. So, that's going to be funny. So, I'm going to put that in the song, too. But what I got so far is over 7,000 years ago, God gave us a libation, and now this divine beverage is brewed in every nation, on every continent, except one from far away to near. Humanity can all agree we love this thing called beer. I should just get rid of that next line, because I've already decided we're going with the top line. All right, right? So then we go to instrument, right? Back, back, just mm -hmm. cool things like that, right? And now here we go. So we're going with macro brews just because, you know, some people still like that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So there's Budweiser, Budweiser from St. Louis, Yingling Out, Low PA, Coors in Colorado, we ain't even left the USA, Bass Ale, England, Guinness, Ireland, Tenants from the Scots, Weinen, Steffen, Heifen, Weissbier, Rein Heiz, Oh, And that's yeah. what, you like that? Huh? Yeah, Doesn't yeah. that flow so cool? That does, man. So the Germans can be like, yeah! Exactly, right? So fill my, so the chorus is, so fill my glass up to the brim with that tasty brew. I drank to my health yesterday, so this one is for you. One by one, we set them up, and one by one, they fall. There's a million different kinds of beer. We're going to drink them all. And then we keep going, and then I'm starting to, uh, I haven't finished everything, right? right, so right. I finished. And I also don't want the song to be like 90 minutes long. I mean, this is a drink. What is this song? Oh, they sweaty and salty. Got salt in them. Yeah. Sometimes that happens like when we do after work beers and I've come over, I've been working all day and I'm like, ah, I need to go wash my face. I got crap. So anyways, beer from Scandinavia, Belgium, France, and Spain. So raise your glasses, bottoms up, now fill them up again, right? <laughs> so enjoy from a big name brewery or better, brew your own. Um, but enjoy your beer, because once things clear, you ain't driving home, so fill my glass up to the brim with that. See? Isn't that cool? I'm a good song. That is Thank good, you. Man. That's going to be right. so fun to, to hear that. It is. And we're going to put rock and roll guitars and bagpipes and all sorts of stuff. Bagpipes and crowd sounds. And, 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 and so the cool thing is it's all yelling, right? It's like if you listen to if you listen to uh, the Dropkick Murphys again, which right. is kind of my model, like right? Bar scene. Exactly. Long, right? Exactly. So you don't have to be active. So you're going to be on it. I'm going to be on it. If you guys want to be on it, you got to get a hold of us via Twitter or YouTube or something. Leave a message. All you got to do is record just one line. Yeah. You know? I've done this before with them. It's actually pretty pretty easy. So it would you be like You don't that. have to be in tune or in key. 
You just gotta shout. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, would it be like, it'd be like that? Basel, and then you'd be like England, and I'd be like, you know, Guinness, Ireland, tennis from the Scots. What do you be better is if folks from those countries contribute to that. And you know what? I do know some folks from those particular <laughs> countries. <laughs> I mean, uh, any of the countries that you're naming, or any country in the world that wants to, that'd be cool if they were like, hey, because you know what we need, you might get their accents in there. Oh, you know what? I know. Or even their, or even your local language, you know, use, say, say your country name or something in their language, you know, would right. that be cool? I don't know. Yeah. And so, you know, after, after the UK, well, uh, Biden Steppen, Biden Steppen, what did I just say? Biden Steppen. It's German. It's long. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 15 consonants. No, it, it, it's Bayern Schepen, right? Bayern Schepen, Hefe Weissbier. So Hefe Weissbier is the beer. Bayern Schepen is the, uh, what's that brewery I said we have to go visit someday? Oh, the oldest, oldest brewery in the world. Six euros for an hour, huh? <laughs> it's a tour, man. You're going on a tour of the brewery. I mean, that's, do you really think that's expensive? Six euros? Well, converting Six to euros is like eight bucks, dude. Well, like 12 bucks. Okay, but well, still, 12 bucks is almost, almost, almost half, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, I would hope it includes a beer tasting at least. You know? It better, so. or I will give it a very bad Yelp review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> See, this is the part where the beer is kicking in and we're know. getting silly. We're getting, and that's, that's the fun part, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all fun, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Which is why we definitely read the recipes and get things going before. before. Yeah, we're, we're at the easy point now. So, yeah. well, and we do, we do. You know, it's, the truth is, we do pace ourselves. Yeah. You know, because we will always remember the beer one time. <laughs> that was like a long time ago, too, man. Wasn't it? That was. It was like years ago. I that was before I got when I went to California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I mean, we were live, we were both living here in town and. Yeah, the beer of doom, or what's the uh, what's the the, the, the catastrophic box. beer? Well, whatever it was supposed to be, it wasn't. Yeah. It was probably one of Terry's recipes because we were shopping out of there. He was still a pretty good supply case back then. Yeah. You know, he had good supplies and stuff. He was more of a supplier than he was a brewer. Right. Now he's more of a brewer. Right. But it's safe. That's fine. Yeah. But it brings exactly. the money in, you know. But you should probably change the name of your business. So in any case, yeah, it was just, you know, I don't think 12 bucks for an hour tour is it. I mean, compared to the $1,400 to get there. But then again, I mean, well, you're right. I, I, I'm only being facetious um, for fun, because that's what we do. You probably couldn't see much more with an hour anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. after an hour, you're just going to be like, OK, you know. And here we have the Pilsners. Is that different Pilsners or new Pilsners? Well, they're pretty much the same pilsners, but we're <laughs> right. filling in the last 45 minutes well, of the tour. <laughs> I took a tour. This was a couple of years ago. You remember my friend Jonathan? Mm -hmm. uh, it was his birthday. I want to say it was 2017. I don't forget home in the, in the military, and he he he's kind of a, a, a Scotch aficionado. You know, he loves Scotch. It's his, yeah, it's his thing. And his his wife at the time, um, hate to say it like that, but it's truth. It happens. Uh, she scheduled a tour of a, a you know, a, of the Scotts distillery. I remember you guys went on that. Yeah, continue, here, continue, yeah, continue. continue. Here's an interesting thing I learned through that. that it can't be called Scotch, though. It's kind of like champagne. Only Scotch can come from Scotland, just like only true champagne can come from Champagne, France. You know what I mean? So it's one of those one of those things. So they didn't call it Scotch there. They just called it a, I forget, I forget how they... The language they use to make it legal, Scottish style whiskey, Scottish style yeah. whiskey, whatever. But anyway, it was a tour of the distillery, and it probably didn't last more than 40, 30, 40 minutes. You know what I mean? Just it was a small operation, but still, it's pretty neat though because up until pretty much the distillation, it's almost identical to making beer as far as mm -hmm. the boil, the grain, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no hops in it, but but in the same sense, no. but. You know, well, but, all the distillation does is just hyper. Right. It, it just hyper affects the alcohol. Level. I just I just was intrigued by it. I was like, man, that sounds just like beer making up to this point, you know. And then it, obviously it it diverges and you know becomes you know becomes a whiskey, but it included a taste. It was almost part of the thing. And so 
they set us around these tables, and you could tell this was very organized because they had these placemats and they had the different, you know, whiskeys they make, and there was a bunch of whiskeys out on the table, and they wanted us to fill out kind of these comment card things uh -huh. and check box little like the flavors that we detected because they were still the impression I got from this this distillery was they were still learning. You know, they've been around for a few years, but they're still experimenting, you know, trying new things. And it was, I laughed because some of the choices were like tire flavor, rubber, <laughs> you know, I'm like, really? You know, and a little, a little hostess, you know, she explains, like, yes, and these are, these are, these are, these cards are built up of previous responses by, by people. Like the most common responses we get of flavors they detect when they, when they taste the whiskeys. And um, so you know, what you're telling me is there are people out there that go around licking tires. I guess so because just like there's people out there apparently who go around chewing on whatever's in a barnyard. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. off flavors, it tastes off like flavor. a barnyard. Pumpkin. Barney, what are you doing? I'm chewing chewing on the barnyard. Bar I do not taste barnyards ever. But yeah, there was some out there was some outlandish yeah, uh, flavor true. choices there. I mean, gasoline. I mean, just. Weird oh, gasoline. gasoline. I know what to gasoline tastes I don't, like. I don't know what... You like, never have to say, siphon gas out of your tank. <laughs> I, I'm not <laughs> taking gas. gas. This is bleach. Um, <laughs> I don't know what she paid for the, for the tours. Uh -huh. you know? I, I, was, I was a guest. You know, I was asked, sure. asked to come along. You know, I was invited to join. But, it, but what was cool is it included that. The whole point of my little diatribe there was it included the, uh, the, the taste. And yeah, I left buzzed. I bet she did. Because uh, it's funny because his sister was there and she doesn't drink. And so she passed her whiskey over to me. Oh, nice. And, and Stephanie was the DD. And so. Um, wait, 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 wait. She had a little taste. Why in the that, world would the DD not be the person who doesn't drink, anyways? Well, I know it's kind of funny. And ironically, not ironic. That's not ironic. That's not irony, actually. Coincidentally. They were both named Stephanie. <laughs> His sister named Stephanie as well. Yeah, you know what? I knew that. Yeah. You know, I knew that. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew that. But, but uh, just, I don't know why the teetotaler Stephanie didn't also be the DD. <laughs> well, or did know. she live somewhere else? Was it? Well, she lives. She lives in Seattle. She did. You know, I don't know where she. I haven't, I haven't talked to her in, in a couple years. But yeah, it doesn't have much. It's, it's not much helpful if your DD won't drive. But the whole the whole point of the story was that that tour of that distillery. Included a tasting as part uh -huh. of as part of the little Ooh. package deal, and so I would hope a six six euro tour would include some tasting and you know this one. I would I would expect so. Although you know I've heard two things. I mean number one German beers are really great, and number two German beers all taste the same. Oh my yeah, It so doesn't nice. like if if they try and stick by the right height schedule, right? They because it's so restricting that you can't. Well, I've heard it's a little less restricted now. Well, know, so, it might be, you know, as a modern thing, you know, they're a little more lean. like, all right, we can venture out outside there. And I don't know for sure, but I would like to think, man, that that maybe there's homebrewing in Germany, too, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm sure there's homebrewing. Small-time breweries are like, dude, no, F the, uh, dude, the birch, whatever the heck. Germany you know. is so oppressive that they say, I'm sorry, you can't brew your own beer. Dude, they just got like thrown into the communist Russia camp, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like there's these evil countries out there: China, Soviet Russia, and Germany. That is stupid. That is that is ridiculous. It's yeah, like, I think I think, I think it's, it's not as big a deal. I mean, I'm sure like for the big macro brews, it's probably a big deal, you know. But I don't think it's as big a deal for the uh, maybe the small town guys. But that's why um got you. That's why. Shiner Bach became Shiner Bach. Expound? Well, I don't know the full history, but I know that the Bach style beer is a, you know, is a German style beer, and like the original, well, I, don't know, I don't know if founders is the right word, the original, you know, founders always wanted to brew this style of beer. Of course, it was against that, that German purity law. Right. And so, it became Shiner Bach in the United States. It's brewed out of San Antonio in Texas. You know? Well, it's the Shiner Brewery. Right. I mean, the recipe the recipe is outside of the limits of the, the you know, the German period. Right. And so it's like, you can't brew this beer. It's like, no, well, in well, America, America we can. Yeah. <laughs> right. Come to America, where we brew beer like we like it. Oh, let's get this stew.
So he walked away, going to get scissors, even though I have two pocket knives in my pocket. Apparently he doesn't like my pocket. Or he's about to boil. <laughs> We're getting close. Jeez, man. <laughs> We're getting close. We're getting close. It is definitely warm. I wouldn't want to take a bath in this right now. No. What, um, where are we going? What flavor? Uh, go with the, do we have any atomics? Okay. Go with the atomics, because we've done the, uh, what did we do? We did the loggers, right? The loggers. And then we just did a couple of, uh, well, obviously the lines. Hazies. We, did, we did the limes. The paleo. And then we did the, um, well, we did the loggers, and we did a couple of the 10 pins. Yeah. yeah. Ten do pins. the atomics. Back for Atomic. Let's go do there, man. Right, man? So the Atomics are from the Red Hook Brewery, too. Show them the can. Show them the can. Show the can. Show the can. Show the can. That's probably good. Whoop. All right. Mm. Oh. Oh. So, yeah, man. It just seems like fun. Go there one day. Eat sausages. I would love to go back to Germany. I lived there when I was a little kid. Yeah, but you were so young. Yeah, right? exactly. I don't remember, remember much of it. Uh, but I would love to see Germany as a grown adult and just experience the culture, the food, the beer, and just have, have a great time. You know what we got to do, man? Well, this is like truly, this is something that I, I'm, I'm working on with. I want to go to Argentina at one point. I need to find someone from Argentina. I have someone from Argentina who follows me on Twitter. I need yeah. to foster this relationship. And this is not a using thing, but we need to do If you want to go to Germany, I know someone. His name is Dirk Lambersbach, right? That's, That's Germany, a, right? That's a German name. <laughs> he, like, he likes my singing, you know? And he's, I don't know how old he is, but he his little handle or little tiny bio on Twitter is old but not stupid. <laughs> Anyways. Everyone, his nickname is always Lampy, but his name is Dirk Lampersbach. Anyways, so I know a guy in Germany. Okay. It's like, and I will tell you, by knowing my friends in England, oh my gosh, the trip was so much better. Oh yeah, was, if you know someone who can help you out, do you know where he lives? Like what area? No, I'll figure it out. Because what I'm thinking, we could go to Sweden and visit my friend Eddie. Yeah? Yeah. Sweden? Sweden, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they say God in Sweden. I don't think they do. They have a lot of those words with double vowels, like AA. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Emmy is absolutely amazing. And she speaks English Very good. and Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she speaks Spanish as well as I do, but I know she speaks Spanish and English and Swedish. Oh, Sweden is close to Germany as well, so ish. Maybe they say yeah. Maybe they do say yeah. I don't know. I could ask her. Maybe they say yeah. Okay. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I would love to go back to Europe and just see. I'd like to go and visit Europe, not in the military, which I'm no longer in the military. Oh and, yeah, and be as a grown adult, which I'm a grown adult. That's not like that. And you know, here's the thing. So here's one thing that okay, maybe it's personal. You know, maybe not all, everyone will agree. But when I went to England, you know, we did go to Big Ben. And it was shrouded completely from foundation to spire in scaffolding. Oh, and crazy. yet my kid was still thrilled. I saw a big Ben. It's like, okay. You know what you did, kiddo? All oh, right. Good job. <laughs> I just, you know, you just got rid of all the sarcasm in there. And it's like, you know what? You're happy. I'm happy. It was a good time. Hi. What's up, kid? What's oh, no, you're in there. You don't know how in we're here? in here? It's hot out there. It, oh, it is hot. It's way high outside. outside. But What's helping is we have a little cross breeze going through, so it's helping. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay. We're living. We're surviving. You know, it actually would be cooler at my house. And part of it's because we're out of the town. And there's uh, not as much asphalt and not as many houses around right now, right? Towns actually do increase the heat. If you look at if you look at heat maps and stuff, cities are hotter than the countryside. Well, but I, would, I mean, it wouldn't matter where we brewed. It just would have been easier in this case because this brew is going to ferment here. Oh, well, I'm just talking about, I was just talking about heat and stuff. Oh. No, no, it absolutely made sense to brew here because, yes, I have 10 gallons of beer at my house and you have no gallons of beer at your house. That is wrong. It's yours now. That's like a sin or something. All right. You know, we can bring her to Germany and get her drunk. It'd be fun. 
<laughs> Maybe in a few years. <laughs> Why, why a few years, man? Why you gotta go all American? Wait, 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 she, wait. Germany, she could probably reach the bar and it'd be okay. I don't know what the laws are in Germany. England actually has AIDS laws too. You guys I'm heard sure. of Emmy Rich? Heck yeah! I'm wait, sure. wait, 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 wait. We gotta come in. Oh, we gotta come in. And this is someone who knows oh, Emmy. Your glasses on. Who's this? Ken Luxilien. Not, oh, oh, oh my goodness. Boily, we're good. Not only do I know Emmy Rich, but I have performed on Emmy Rich's songs. If you've ever seen the song Periscoper, I am one of the voices on, you take care of this. Do I need to serve or yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry, man. Hold on a second. Uh, hold on, Ken. We'll be right with you. Ouch, ouch. This is really hot. <laughs> Holy crap. No, no, I'm fine. I'm going to go real slow so we don't get a boil over. Yeah. One thing we do. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not yet. Not yet. I talked to Emmy quite a bit, but I definitely will. No. All right, no, just turn it off. Turn it off, dude. We can catch up. <laughs> we can get back to boil easy. Hold on, Ken. <laughs> we got a we got an emergency here. Oh, no, it's an emergency. So yeah, um, while he's trying to figure things out, yeah, I know Emmy. I met her in um, well, I met her on Periscope or Busker. I think I met her on Busker when Busker was a thing, and then I. Um, and Emmy is just, she's just such an amazing person. <laughs> I will do it. I love Emmy. Do not, don't even, don't even try and tell me that I don't like Emmy. <laughs> All right. You know However, what? you know what? You're right. Shame on me. I will download her latest album. <laughs> All right. We are okay. good. Let's get back to a rolling boil. So yeah, I met her. Um, so we have a mutual friend, Peter and Jem Edwards, who live out in England. And Emmy and I, um, she came from Sweden, of course, with her husband, Anders. And I, uh, I met both Anders and Emmy. We hung out for a bit, had a great time. Emmy is a fantastic person. Wow, that's so crazy, dude. That's so crazy that some some guy who knows Emmy is watching our broadcast. I find that very amazing. Small world, <laughs> huge world, small world, huge small world. Oh, that's looking good right there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We're back on a nice roller for the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, I'm gonna hit the button. All right, I'm ashamed. I will go download. Now I'm being shamed into downloading Emmy's album. Okay, we're up. Timer is on. I don't even know how I got talking. How was I talking about Emmy? Because we were talking. Oh, Sweden. We were talking about going to Germany. And yeah. And we said, we well, maybe we should go to Sweden. You know, yeah, I know somebody. Sweden. I know somebody in Sweden. We'll go hang out with Emmy. But what I was saying is that it was so much fun doing real culture, right? So my friend. So well, she's probably not my friend anymore. Emmy told me to stop you. <laughs> Well, you tell Emmy thank you the next time you tune into one of her broadcasts or see her. Um, today we're not doing music, obviously. We're doing beer today. Um, I don't know what we're drinking at this point. Oh, it's the Atomic. Is it an IPA or something? Oh, uh, it's, oh, it's supposed to be an IPA, I believe. The Atomic Robot from uh, Red Hook Brewery. So we're, oh, it's an IPA. It's an IPA. All right. So we're drinking an IPA right now. We've done a couple IPAs and a lager so Dang. far. But what we are making is a uh, Mac and Jack clone. Yeah, Mac and clone. Jack clone, which is an amber ale. Thank you, Ken. Definitely. Send her my love because I do. Emmy is a one. She truly is a wonderful person. She is. She really is, man. Emmy is pretty incredible. Okay. Well, I believe you, man. But getting back to the experience in England is the uh, the whole. Yeah, that is that is, that is a good rolling boil. But hanging out with Jem and Peter and Dan, of course, Dan is from London, too. Right. Yeah. In fact, Dan's a pianist, right? Yeah. Right. Dan's a monster piano player. Oh, man, this cat can play piano. You, you did. Oh, My no, boys are good. You, you and then there's Dan. Dan. Oh, geez. you showed And the way that. he's playing things that feel like Beethoven's third, the third movement of the, the Moonlight, which is, that's the one that's like, right. do, 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 the, the heavy metal oh, guitarists like to play. Yeah. Because it translates really well to heavy metal guitar. And he's playing this and talking to people on a camera. It's like, I don't know how you do that, Dan. <laughs> it, it, it breaks some sort of natural law. You might have made a deal with Satan. I'm not sure. 
Anyways, yeah, no, he's practice, lots of practice, lots of practice, <laughs> and he's really good. And of course, you know, to be fair, and not to slight Dan, but he does that with songs that he knows very well. Right. You know, and so lots of people can do that with a song they know by heart, where their fingers, it's all muscle memory at that point, right? You're not thinking, your fingers are just doing. Do Guitarists will do it, singers can do it, well, to an extent, you can't talk to an audience and sing, but... That would be quite a piece. Yes, that would that would be unnatural. Nice. And Ken has subscribed. Hey, you're a good man. man, Ken. And definitely tell Emmy my love. I do not get to watch Emmy very much because of the whole time gap. I'm usually at work when she goes live. Yeah. It's the way life is. But I, I'm I'm friends with her on Facebook. I message her quite a bit. I see her on Twitter. Yes. So Emmy is really cool. But getting I'm really trying to get back to how amazing it was being able to go to Peter and Jem's parents' house. It was Peter's parents' house, actually. Right. Right? But instead of going, so my one friend is like, you need to go to Diana's Fountain. You need to go to this. You need to go see this place. You need to go see this museum. All these things. And she's like, this is culture. I'm like, that's not culture. Those are historical monuments. You know what culture is? Culture is what the Brits are doing right now. Right, right. Where do you go to eat? You know, where do you go grocery right. shop? Don't go to the tourism stuff. Yeah, I mean, you if know? you want to experience the culture of a country, hook in with someone from that country. Right. And go hang out with them. And that's what I did. Go, go eat at the local restaurant or right. You know, that, and we stayed you know, in. You know, it was go so to the, cool. Go to the tavern. And so we didn't stay in London. We didn't stay in some fancy hotel. We stayed in a little, they call it, what do they call it, a, a non-detached, or basically a duplex. But it was pretty much a uh, <laughs> duplex. No, it was. It's, it's, like, it's like a huge name for a duplex. Yeah, I um, mean, it was. But it was. You did that through Airbnb, right? Your, yes, oh. Airbnb, you know, and it's a little town of Bridge, literally. Um, you know how big Coopville is? Bridge is smaller. No kidding. Wow. Mm -hmm. You can drive from end to end of Bridge in 45 seconds. See, that's like... Probably experienced English culture right there then. Oh like yeah. Small little town right there, you know. Kent, um, which is kind of southern eastern England, right? But well, didn't you say the 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 dudes at the bars are giving you crap for fun because you were mixing beers, you know? That was so crazy because yeah, I would be like, I've had that one. Give me this one next, and the guy's like, What are they oh, doing? He's mixing beers. It's like, no, this is not mixing drinks. Now when you go from tequila to bourbon to beer, tequila back right. to bourbon, and then throw a shot of scotch on top. That's mixing drinks, Bubba. <laughs> right, that's obviously just a cultural difference, you know. Right. They, so, I don't even, you know, like you said, in this culture, you know, they they like their, whatever, whatever this guy or this girl's beer is, they stick with that. Yep, you know? apparently so. You know? And I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but man, England was so great. It was so much fun. I Part of it was because we stayed in the same place. And there was only three pubs, you know, so it bounced between all of them, right? And all of them right there. <laughs> and then we, when you're sitting in a pub and some guy walks in, it's like, oh, my God, they'll let anybody in here. Why are there Americans here? I mean, it's like, this guy either really hates Americans or, or he's messing with me. He's messing with me. <laughs> and he was. He was messing with me. I mean, it was, it was just super cool, dude. It was, it was fun. So, seriously, if you want to go to Germany... I will like hook up with uh, I'll hook up with Dirk a little bit more and say, Hey Dirk, I'm planning on coming to Germany. Can we hang out? Can we go eat well, dinner at your place. I or? definitely think it should be put on the list. Um, obviously we need to let the, the play kind of finish. The That's the thing, you know. So like when I'm going to Japan, my friend uh, my friend Yoko lives in Japan now. She was Timmy's therapist. Oh, okay. okay. And she moved it's part of the reason that my boys don't go to therapy anymore. Is, you know, they hit 20, 22, 21, right? They're of age at this point. And there, there is a learning window that does close. I get it. You know, I mean, it doesn't close completely, but it kind of, it goes from wide open to just cracked open, you know? Sure. Like you and me. So, like, I'm learning Spanish right now, right? If I learned Spanish at a four-year-old, as a four-year-old, I would be fluent by the time I'm this age. Right. You know, if I was constantly in it. You did set the timer. You know, that's what I love about you. You're good about those details that I am not good at. Semi <laughs> semicolons, brother. Semicolons, <laughs> semicolons. <laughs> yeah, I, I hit the timer already. Um. <laughs> All right, man. Leave me alone on the album. I will get it done. We're at 52 minutes remaining. So our next option isn't until the two-minute 
three mark marks. So he said that fifty minutes before we're good at that. Gotcha. But anyhow, so yeah, I'll try to hook up with Dirk and see if I can do that or Yeah, man, that'd be great. You know, you know, maybe maybe we can kind of do a, a loop or something. You know, meet up meet up with, with your buddy in Germany and then go up and see your friend in Sweden, you know? And just kind of do this thing, you know. Because it's, it's probably going to be a couple of years before we can do that. That's plenty of time to save up money for that as well, you know. Um, well, so I want to go to Latvia in 2023. Latvia? Latvia. I know, isn't that weird? Well, my friend Ilsa is from Latvia. Ah. Now, she lives, she's here in America. You know what I asked her? I asked her, can I give Emmy's website a book? Yeah! Heck yeah! Dude, we're the most professional beer <laughs> brewing Broadcast this side of the Columbia River. So, so you, you don't know Ken, right? Or... No, I don't know Ken. Okay. Um, but Ken knows Emmy, and I know Emmy, and we're right. both friends of Emmy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely, man. Go ahead. Throw it out there. Put it in the comments. Um, for those of you who are watching on the replay or anything like this, Emmy Rich, is she's a singer, songwriter, um, and just wonderful person. She's out of Sweden. And so, yeah, go ahead and follow Ken's plug there. Check her out. She's on YouTube. She's on. She's here on Haps, um, and she's been doing it a long time. She's super fun. Hey, no problem, man. I, I really do like Emmy. I mean, literally, <laughs> literally. I have gone out to dinner with Emmy. You know, it was in England. Uh, where was it? I think it was Marsgate or something. Margate, not Mars. Margate. But yeah, I sat with her at a table and talked with her and her husband face to face. It was fantastic. <laughs> I've been to England one time, and that was to Portsmouth, England, which is the best way I can describe it for you know us being Navy people. Portsmouth is kind of like the Royal Navy's Norfolk. You know what I mean? So like yeah, our, I got you. Our Norfolk, Virginia is, is kind of on the same par with the uh, with Portsmouth, England. You know what I mean? So which is fine. It was a great. I had a great time. But yeah. It was in '96 though, so it's been it's been a minute. And it was with the Navy. I was there with the military, which, changes which, means, which means I had Cinder I was an airman, so which means I had Cinderella Liberty. Yeah, yeah it was. It was. Nice. I mean, it was fun, but it was very restricted because even though I was a grown adult, also known as Goose. Okay, now that name, I'm actually, I think I know that name. All right. So I've seen. I, I've definitely seen you in broadcast where I've been there before. So. So, anyways, continue. Anyway, I, I like it was just my, my experience was, you know. Fun because I got to visit England, but it was limited because I was a low-ranking member yep. of the military, and so I had to be back on the ship by a certain time. And yeah. So, anyways, but getting back to the whole culture thing, it was really great. I mean, I, I told my friends Peter, it's like you know the biggest thing I want to do, more than going to London, more than anything else, I want to go to dinner at your folks' house. Oh, nice. That's what. Tell your mom she's making <laughs> dinner, and she did. For the bloody American. <laughs> uh, and it was so funny because, all right, so we're not going to get too political here because it's just dangerous. It's just the way uh, it is. It ruins, it ruins the fun, man. Let's not get political. Oh, yeah, it know. does. But there is a funny thing is the fact that when I went to England, because you know, in some of my other pursuits, I'm incredibly political, right? I made a vow no politics. Get on that plane and we cross the pond. I am not talking politics. I'm going to talk about beer and sausages and you name it, all the wonderful, fun things, but I am not talking politics. I swear. We were there 36 hours and some dude started talking politics to me. It was like, no! Oh, <laughs> I, I can't! No, I don't. No, no, I am not going to. Okay, buddy, sit down. Here we go. Grab a beer. <laughs> It was a great conversation. We actually had a good time. Yeah, you, know? you actually told me about that. You, right, but it was just, it was just funny. It was it was it was it was politics, but not like argumentative and stuff. It was just it was no. Just, and know. I mean, you know, that's like so. I'm a big Second Amendment guy, right? When I go to England, I'm not gonna walk around England telling them they all need to get guns. That's yeah, that's that's an American thing. Not it's like that, that's, that's your backyard, man. It's yeah. like you guys play in your house the way I, you want to play. I'm a big firm believer of winning Rome. Yeah, do as the Romans, you absolutely. Know, I mean, whatever country I'm, I've been visiting, whether, whether it was with the military or on my own, it's like I'm not there to push my views and beliefs on stuff. I'm there to experience them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and you can have you can have certain you can believe certain things and think that certain countries should change, but 
you know, vice versa, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's not like you can do anything. I mean, there's certain things. It's like, let's pretend the Aztecs were still around. It's like, well, I'm an Aztec. It's like, so what are you doing? Well, I'm going to chop this guy's head off. Uh, for why? The no. <laughs> because we needed to rain, apparently. So, right, know, there are limitations. I'm with the Aztecs. I'm chopping people's heads off. It went in Rome, right? It's like, okay, yeah, there's a limit there. There is a limit, man. <laughs> but, but at the same time, we're doing good on time. For the most part. I'm yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm proud of this textbook, brother. Textbook. That is. That boil is textbook. That is the definition of rolling boil. All right. Hey, Ken. Thank you very much. 50 cents from Ken. Oh, Ken's a good time. We like Ken. We definitely <laughs> like Ken. Feel free to come back. Pre appreciate you, sir. <laughs> we brew beer. We talk about a lot of beer, but as you may have guessed, we talk about a lot of other beer. Everything things. else as well. Yep. <laughs> and our broadcast quality is going to get better, so I, I can tell you right now that the audio on this is not amazing. Heavy oh, duty. Too far echo. away. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's not so much the Oh, they were in the garage, yeah. Yeah, so we got all these hard surfaces in it. Wow, 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 wow. It's, it, it sounds like Yeah, this is not a studio. This is a garage. Right. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we can fix that. We can build those go gos I was talking about. You know, the the, the movable sound attenuation panels and stuff. Sure. Or better yet, maybe actually build an official beer brewing studio in my basement. You know, I know there's a guy that has a basement that would be ideal for. Really, we should, we should like, be friends with him. <laughs> I mean, he built a audio studio down there. I'm pretty sure he can build a brewing studio as well. <laughs> yeah, I bet he could. Shut up. We should come. Kind of <laughs> Shut up, dude. I'm busy now. I know this guy. You know, maybe you can come help me chop firewood every so often, so I didn't have to do that instead of work. <laughs> I thought you had children for that. I do. In fact, I think they're doing You have right children now. in their twenties. What is it? Why aren't they like chopping it all in one day? They act well because come on. Uh, part of that is I, 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 I can actually give you a legitimate reason. Part of that is the wood splitter only moves so fast. True. Which is good, because you don't want a 27 wood splitter slamming down. I mean, because yeah. if you miss and your hands are there, it's they're, they're done. Yeah, so. I get that. Safety is obviously paramount. You know, you right. Them to, and you know my kids have autism, so I can twist things. I, I, I was just Although I got to tell you, that autism thing, that's why, it's like, hi, mate, I need you to unstack the whole trailer. Guess who doesn't stop until the whole trailer is unloaded from wood and everything is stacked? But the whole time he's doing that, is he saying, Bart, come on! No, that's only dishes. <laughs> only, only when doing dishes. And only come on! Around. Actually, it's weird. It's funny. Okay, so you're welcome to my greenhouse ice tech. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but, um... Anyhow, uh, it's interesting. Jaime only gets pissed off and cranky when I'm there. Oh, I see. If I say go do this and then walk away, he works like a he champ. He does his thing, yeah. <laughs> yep. right. Yeah, he's a good he's a good kid. So hey Ken, where are are you are you American? Or are you from some other country? Some other country. Well it's a maybe. possibility. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. Exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, Oh, you're in the UK. What part? Where are you at? Northern, Southern, in Kent, up by London? Wow. Making a mess over here. Wow. Kind of late there. <laughs> man, maybe he's a night out, man. <laughs> Shit, I'm an ex. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I am. I work. I work. Uh, I work at night. <laughs> bath, bath. Um, okay, relate bath to Broadstairs, Margate. Um, Bridge, which is next to Canterbury. That's where I've been. I've been down in a lot of Kent. A lot of Kent stuff. But I know where North Yorkshire is. I mean, you don't have to, like, pinpoint where you live in the UK. I mean, we don't. We actually make it a point never to pinpoint where we live either. I mean, the Internet is London. Go west 100 miles. Okay. I got you. Easy enough, right? Nice. <laughs> that. That, I that we can see. I yeah. can see that on the map in my head. Nice. So sweet. Well, hey, thank you very much for joining the broadcast. Seriously, that was that's really cool. And it is just totally cool that we both know Emmy. That is, I find that very amusing. Right. Small world in that case, man. Yeah. Time check. Oops, you know what? 
computer yeah hey come back on we'll, we'll just deal with it yes ken we do brew our own beer grab the recipe oh yeah mm -hmm. but I, so, can, I can no no we'll do do you know right here I'll do the, the thing that beer makes you do <laughs> you only rent beer <laughs> only rent beer so what we're doing today let me hop up real quick we'll just put this in there we might be a little sketchy because the internet Something just went wonky there. So we're doing we're doing a Mac and Jack clone today, um, which is I don't you know what I don't know if Mac and Jack is on your side of the pond. I don't know if they're international or not, but it's a uh, it's an amber ale, and so it's not super hoppy, not super strong, but it tastes really good. It's really popular over here, that's for sure. And so that's what we're doing today. And that's kind of all, the whole broadcast. We uh, we get together every other week. So we do this every two weeks. We don't do it every week. Um, <clears throat> we're either at my place or, like today, we're here at Steve's place. And we brew a batch of beer. And we talk just about whatever we want to talk about. We just kind of have conversation. And when people like you show up, it makes it even better because we can talk with the audience. And that just makes it more interactive. Um, so, I mean, and you know this, I mean, cause you know, Emmy, so you know how the whole live streaming thing works. I mean, it's great. And you interact with your audience and that's really cool. So that's what we're doing. And we're brewing this Mac and Jack clone. We usually, uh, we usually keep rolling until we're done with the boil. And about that time, I mean, by that time we're like, so what are we up to? We're almost up to two hours. We do long broadcasts. <laughs> we're up to two hours right now. And, uh. So by the time that we're done with this, it'll be three hours or so. And so usually when we're done to when we're ready to put it into the fermenter and get through that, we usually just call it. I mean, there's a couple reasons. Number one, we've run out of things to talk about. And number two, it's been three hours. It's long, long broadcasts. Do you uh, do you broadcast? Because if you do, we will definitely follow you. We'll do that. I think I can do that anyway. Subscribe to you. We will subscribe back. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so the internet's back. All right, Ken. It is getting late. My goodness, it's got to be almost midnight there, right? You guys are what? You're eight hours ahead, so it's like 11.30 there. And I promise I will buy Emmy's new album. I will definitely. Cheers to you, sir. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, hope you don't mind. We subscribe to Ken. Yeah, oh, that's okay. fine, man. Sweet. <laughs> hey, I know another you. connection to England then, you know. <laughs> yeah. We need to go back to England now. You know, who knows, man? That's the beauty of like the internet. You can meet people and like not just on the internet, but like you said, you you met your friends in England for the wedding and literally like and then made new friends as well, you know. Yeah, so, and I, I literally did, you know. I sat across the table from Emmy. It's so like we ate dinner and talked and typed up. Yeah, no, touched her physically. Not like this. I, I didn't really well, do this. That was like dirty, man. It does, you know. I, that's okay. Let's back up. Let's. 
Did you, give her, did you mean to give her a hug or something? I gave her a nice, friendly, platonic okay. hug. Yes. <laughs> and so do both my boys. Well, Timo more than Jaime. Jaime doesn't give good hugs. He really doesn't. He probably doesn't care about it. He's like stiff as a board. No, he loves hugs. He likes to get hugs, but he doesn't hug back very well. Ah, I see. And the big thing is, you know, it's with it, he likes to be squeezed. It's uh, there's something, and this is like not every. Can only go to UK if you buy the. I'm gonna buy the album. <laughs> I gotta finish the pro. This guy, this guy, Steve, he's in the, the album. <laughs> Maybe you should buy it then. Steve's gonna buy the album too. Yeah. <laughs> Emmy no, actually is really good. No, so I, 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 I believe you, you have know, You know, let's see. Let's talk about let's talk about not so much Emmy, but this concept of the unknowns. So I do I, I think uh, because of my broadcasting and because I'm involved with a lot of artists and stuff. Thirty six minutes, by the way. Oh yeah. man, we got a ton of time. So that's thirty six minutes till we add the next hop, so thirty minutes, six minutes total. No, no, thirty four minutes till we add the next hop. Gotcha. But there's there are there are a lot of unknowns out there who are fantastic musicians. Oh yeah, I, I and, agree, man. And I think it's really cool. That's one thing that the internet has really given us is the fact that the big labels, because in the seventies and the sixties and the eighties too, so many people failed before they even tried because they just they never got a chance. Yeah. yeah, they never got a shot because for whatever reason, right? And now people can just load up. Get a webcam or an iPhone or off their desktop or whatever and start going for it. And sometimes, you know, Emmy's got a pretty strong following. You know, is she Megadeth like this? No, she's not Megadeth. Oh, but she's famous. still working her way up, you know. And she's doing her thing. And yeah. Sometimes you got to do both, and people know you do both. It's like, all right, so this is my, I really love my friend Emmy's music. I, actually, I also know that she's a music teacher at the same time because she's, her music isn't fully supporting it. It's like, you know, that's fine. You know, people do that all the time. I got my friend Ray Herring. You know, oh, I get that. I, I'm an example of that, too. Well, yeah, software engineer, but you got to have another job. So I'm an aircraft mechanic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I work in Napa. There you go. I love your room. That's why I keep doing this in case you're wondering. I, I totally know why you're doing that. Well, not for our viewers. This has a good aroma. Yeah. Well, I think Ken is gone. I'm not 100 percent sure because it doesn't show us who's live at the right, moment. Right. But he does say, "Yep, yeah, it's sketchy," and I think he's talking about the internet right. strength, which is back, by the way. He said, "But also getting real late, so I'll catch up on the replays." And Emmy gonna be real thrilled. So, cool. yeah. I don't think you have to worry. I, I think Ken has gone to bed. Which oh, oh, it's, it's almost late. Yeah, it's late yeah. <laughs> it's freaking late there. Probably dark. Right? But yeah, hey Kenny, if you catch the replay, you know, thanks for thanks for chatting with us. You mm -hmm. know, certainly, certainly appreciate you know comments. So. Oh wait, not yet. <laughs> I want to be there with you guys. <laughs> He's like, oh wait, <laughs> oh wait, there's more. <laughs> Speaking of more, more, someone is slowing someone, down. They're here. Someone. All right, look. Did I not mention maybe an hour ago about how we pace ourselves so we don't get blasted? I'm not trying to get blasted. That was before this point. We reached the point of, you know, blasting. I'm pacing. I'm enjoying my beer. You're just drinking it. You're, you're not enjoying it. You're not appreciating this. You're just drinking. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm just messing with you. Oh. I hear a noise. Let's be a family member. Open the garage door all the way because it's my turn to step off camera. Because now I have to do the thing that Peter made me do. Oh. That would be close. Why are you open the garage door? Because I want to. And I still want to be able to talk to you. Then we can close the Okay. You're going to have to open it that way. Never mind. Well, I was really confused why you wanted to open the period. Hi, kiddo. Um, Come this way. <laughs> Sit down. Talk to Ken. Uh, so, Daddy, tomorrow yeah. I do Someone not. Someone has to be on camera. Go ahead. You you talk to Bailey. Uh, I do not have to do. I don't have to bring absolutely anything to school. I'm not We're gonna take it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to help us out. You don't have to do it first. So, this, <laughs> that was good. So this is the professionalism part of her. Hey, you come here. Give me a hug. Come on. You're adorable. Everybody loves you. You know it. It's true. 
Well, then come here and let me beat you. See, there we go. Just come here. Just come here. I want to give you a hug. Watch this magic. <laughs> this is my friend Bailey. Bailey is Steve's daughter, not my daughter, but I love her very much. Okay, you can go. <laughs> Send him back in there. Let him know that I kind of need to use the restroom because I've been drinking beer. So anyways, I was telling Steve the whole concept of the unknowns. And of course, in my other life, um, you can right, find sorry, me. Man. That's all right, man. I'm talking about unknown artists. There are so many. Wait, well, let me close it. There you go. That'll be good. So there are just so many unknown artists. And some of them are really fantastically talented. Uh, my friend Emmy Rich, uh, Daniel Roberts, you know, amazing piano player. I like to think that I'm pretty good. Maybe not amazing, but I'm pretty good. I think so. <laughs> I can sing good. <laughs> You've made money with your voice and your guitar, and so therefore you are good. Okay, thank you. I will take that. But they're out there, and then, you know, it's just... I do think, so what's interesting is, so Bill Maher, who I don't necessarily agree with on everything, because obviously I'm an Orthodox Christian, and he is a, like, militant atheist, you know. So there are many areas where we disagree. But one of the things he, he did say is, like, he was talking about Spotify. And apparently somebody was complaining about Spotify, because on Spotify, certain people were getting more plays than everyone else. And they were complaining about this, like it was some sort of evil thing. And he was like, no, that's just the natural thing. These people are good. Right. You know, and these people are I mean, not if so good. Who, I mean, it makes sense. If someone's a Spotify user, which actually I'm not, I don't know much about it, but I imagine you can search for the music. Yep. And when you find artists you like, you tend to either favorite them or search for them again. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you're going to get played more because, you know. Right. And the ones who are good, you know, the ones who have some sort of connection, they get played more, and then people tell their friends and stuff. It helps to be young if you think about it. So I'm like, True. what? What are you, 40? 44. 44. I'll, I'll be 45 40. next month. Really? Yeah. Did you know I'm 47? You're going to turn 47? No, I'll be 47. Wait, it's 2021, right? I will be 47 right? later this year. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I will be 45 next month. So. Okay, so we're only a little bit apart. But anyways, the point is, so people like me have I mean, a little... 25. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Look at you, youngin. <laughs> In any case, my point was <laughs> No, my point was is that it helps it helps to be younger. Right? Because younger people jump onto this stuff. Oh yeah. You know, you were just talking about how you do CDs. Yeah. You know? Who does that anymore? <laughs> yeah, but, and it's true. CDs are kind oh, of guys. they're kind of fading out. Yeah. So anyways, it's just but still. So I I, I actively hunt for people who are still good musicians, good artists, but are unknown, you know? Because I think it's fun. It's like, I don't want to listen to Adele. Do I think Adele has a couple good songs? Yes, I do. Do I think Adele is the next Mozart? No, not necessarily. You know, I think she's good. I like Rolling in the Deep. I think Rolling in the Deep is great. But my friend Brooke Ritchie, who is also an unknown, right? She's a girl I went to college with, so... So she's significantly younger, right? Because she was like, so she's 25-ish, somewhere in there, uh, mm. mid-20s, right? Because she was, she, when, when I was with college, she was your typical college student, out of high school, age college. So right. not even 30, right? And she wrote this song called Dreams and Sorrows, which is just fantastic. Like, I need more amplifiers to turn this song up. It is <laughs> just an amazing song. She nailed it. Like, literally, I told her that, too. I was like, I will put that song because she did her CD release album uh, party. And, of course, it was during COVID, so it had to be mm -hmm. virtual. But she invited me. And I'm like, sure, I'll go to your CD, your virtual CD release party. Yeah, it'll be fun. 
she played that song and it's like, holy crap. It's like, I will put you up against Taylor Swift and Adele and, you know, pick your other hot female artist of the day. It's like, with that song, I will put you up against them any day of the week. And if anyone says you're wrong, I'll be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> that song is fantastic. Yeah. My friend nailed it with that song. Every song on the album amazing? No, of course not. But that's not going to happen. Neither are the top artists song. You know, yeah. Song, you, know. you know, it's like Megadeth has their big one and then 10 more songs on the album that are kind of like, eh, if you're a huge Megadeth fan, you're like, yeah, right. because I love Megadeth. It's like that song was just him dropping a guitar on the floor and walking out the door. It was awesome! Was awesome. <laughs> no, dude. It, it, if, if it was a statement, it would have been, but he was just really drunk and couldn't hold the guitar anymore. And he didn't really walk out the door so much as fell out the door. Oh, it was so awesome! No, man. To be awesome, it has to be intentional. What is wrong with you? <laughs> My point being, right, right, I got you. Man. Die hard fans, with die hard fans, you. Yeah. They give you total crap, and you're going to be like, it's right. the best thing in the world. You know? <laughs> It depends, and you know, so so I'm a hard audience. I'm a hard audience, right? But you uh, you kind of dance with. It's like you have to know when your uh, whoever the artist is. Do you want feedback, or do you just want me to tell you you sound good? You know, because right. I'll do both. I really will. It's like if you want me to give feedback, I will tear your song apart. You want me to tell you what you want to hear, or do you got? Yeah, but if you just want me, if you just want me, to just like, do you like it? It's like I will tell you that too. You know, now if I absolutely hate it, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be like, I didn't like Sorry, that man. Yeah. It's like, oh, you want to tell you what's rough when your dad does that to you. Look at this one, Dad. Yeah. Uh, About so, that. <laughs> pretty much. You can always tell when my dad doesn't like something I've written, because he's like, wow, oh, you think it needs that, Chow? <laughs> he never comes what? out and says, I don't like that. He just asks me about a part of it. I'm <laughs> You're I've really gotten yeah, I've gotten to the point where he's like, "Well, you know, what do you think? Is, what do you think this part is on?" It's like you don't like it, do you, Dad? Well, I didn't, Dad. Just say it. You don't like it. <laughs> okay, it's all right. You don't. That, that's like what I was telling. I that's do. what I was telling folks that I was taking our beer to. I'm like, if you don't like it, you can tell me. You're not gonna hurt my feelings if you don't like the beer. Yeah, you know, we're still well, learning things, man. You know? you know, and the other thing, especially with something. Like, don't be polite. Just tell me. Something as subjective as beer. Because think about it. There are people that like Coors Light. You know? Yeah. They like it. They're like, this is great beer. And then you hand them, well, for example, my friend John Johnson. Now, he likes Coors, he likes Coors Banquet, which right. is still a lot yeah. larger. Right? A little heavier than Coors Light, obviously. But still, not nearly as heavy or aggressive as the beers we drink. Right? He literally, he probably wouldn't like this one. No, that, that's actually pretty. This is the atomic robot. That's right? actually pretty typical among, you know, we'll just say, we'll just keep it in America in this, for this conversation. You know, Americans who, who drink your Bud Lights, your Budweisers, your your American yellow lagers, they tend to not like our kind of beers because they're, they're just too much flavor. It's just too, it's too, it's overpowering, you know? Yeah, and it's not what they're used to. Right. You know, like you've been, if you drink Bud Light for 30 years, you drink a, an IPA, you're going to be like, whoa, you know, because you're not expecting it. You're not expecting it, yeah. I mean, and you've been to Asia, yeah. and you've eaten their food, and yeah. it's like, this is not Chinese, it's not deep fried. You said we're going out to eat Chinese food. We're in Hong Kong eating Chinese food. This ain't deep fried. What the hell? Right. It's like, yeah. American, American Chinese yeah. food is deep fried. <laughs> right. Right, exactly. Chinese Chinese food is completely different. You know, true, and that that's an advantage you and I have. It's like we've been to been these places, places yeah. you know. Yeah, I guess one of the benefits of being actively in the military for so many years, you know, to get doing a full military career, it, it, right. that is not textbook. It's a little aggressive, but I don't know if it's worth fiddling with. I was just looking at it suddenly. It's like, yeah, that's a little aggressive. That's good. That'll work. All right. All right, I got I I gotta do what beer makes you do. <laughs> right, because we only rent beer. That's right. All right. So we're looking at about 23 minutes remaining on the total boil. When there's two minutes left, we're gonna add the second hot packet, which is right here, and we find the recipe. <laughs> the second hot packet. The reason I bring it up is because it's different than the first. In this case, is a cascade hop. 
which is kind of your run of the mill American, you know, American hop. Uh, the first hop packet was a Centennial, which is also pretty common, you know, especially with the home brewers. But we still got a ways to go on that one. I'm going to monitor over here and see if anybody's still with us. Uh, no new comments. But if you won't be offended for a minute, I'm going to go off camera and grab a beer. It's right behind you. But I'm still in your shot. Hold on, I was going off camera for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so usually, usually we have our own homebrew between uh, my house and Jamie's house, but we're, well, you have brew almost ready. I have zero brew. No, that's not. Uh, that's going to be a week, man. I just put it in the keg today. Okay, I got it. Go ahead. So like, we need to look at some of the other uh, carbonation methods because there's faster ways to carbonate just as effectively as. What we achieve with how we do it, we carbonate pretty slow actually. For us, it almost takes a good two a good two weeks to actually fully carbonate the beer to the, the appropriate level. Sometimes we even over over carbonate and we have to adjust it a little bit. No, sometimes you over carbonate. I always over carbonate because I suck at carbonation. Um, I'm just gonna admit that. Oh, well, it happens. What you got here? You want to get on camera? Go ahead, man. Come on, have a seat. Yeah. Hey, folks, this is my nephew, Chase. He is one of our original subscribers. <laughs> one of our most faithful. He's a YouTuber and a Twitch streamer, he, but he's a gamer guy. So if he, if he doesn't brew beer yet because he's only, what, 12 now? Yep. So one day he might brew beer, but he, de he definitely Wait, 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 wait. You're 12? <laughs> You're like two years behind the curve, dude. You need to. All right, he's coming. We're part of our broadcast now, Chase. <laughs> So Chase is a broadcaster, so he's not he's not camera shy. What do you want to say, dude? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, I know, I know. <laughs> you know how to broadcast, but you don't know what you want to say. Because, no? it's, not, because it's not Fortnite or what, what else you broadcast? Well, tell them about your channels, man. Tell them about your channels. It's yeah. cool. Selfless plug, man. Get your channel out there. Yeah, let them uh, know. My channel is Silver Energizer, and I usually like record on Fortnite or stuff like that. I want to soon play COD or something. Just COD? Kind of, yeah. All of Duty, huh? Yep. Oh boy. So violent. That game. So graphic. My little stint with Call of Duty was just not cool. It was fun. Did you break something? Yes. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I was say, and that's yeah, why probably. I don't play anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think I figured that out. Daddy, um, I need your help. Here you go. Hello. Oh, and now the producers are talking. What? Yeah. I saw you. I know. This is what grown ups do because we are not 20. It's not here yet. Just not saying. quite here yet. It's yeah. almost here then. It usually has to sit for like. How long is it? Weeks. Weeks before. Two weeks. Wow. Two weeks. It ferments for two weeks. That's a lot of weeks. It, it's only <laughs> like 13 days. Wait, 14 days is a lot. That's like half a month. It. It's not exactly 14 days. It's just roughly two weeks is what we let it ferment for. I'm going to take this because you cannot have that. Yes, what, in the world, what, what in the world has sure. to be broadcast, Steve? What, what is going on? I don't know. We've taken over. We've taken over. We've, we've been let, supplanted by children. Let the professionals take care of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, lead the broadcast then. Come on, man. Okay. Say something interesting. But yes. here's the trick you got to say something that adults will find interesting. That makes it harder, doesn't it? You never know. Can it be about anything? Anything. Um, but it's got to be interesting to an adult. Kids are hard to deal with. Don't have kids. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know I'm off camera, but I know you folks can hear me. I disagree with that statement 
okay. wholeheartedly. Have kids if you really want to, but if you get very angry or very frustrated very quick, don't. So you're saying that you're annoying. Wow. Yeah, Bailey, you're not any better. You guys are terrible. No. I mean, you are you are not in the spirit you of the right Jamie. Off camera. Jamie. Did you know? I'm not Jamie. I'm his dad. <laughs> That's Jamie. true. Jamie's over there. <laughs> Jamie, did you know that the snake actually splits his head as a, on a rock to a shed? I did know that. It's called, what's it called? Shouting Nation. No, 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 no. No, it's not called Shouting. Shedder Nation. No. Think harder. Heart poop duty. What is it called? What's it called when the snake scratches his head on the rock to split his skin like that? Skin splitting? No. Get out of my chair. Right. You're done. You're fired. Get no, the book. <laughs> no, we we are not. You had your chances. Get out. No, I'm going to hear it on my chin, chin, chin. What? Get out. Get out. Nice. Uh, Bailey, come on nice. now, sweetie. Thank you. All right. We made the stream better. You did. Yeah. You, you, did. you made it so much better. Love you guys. You did make it better. Good job, guys. <laughs> Although he's still going to be doing this. <laughs> the real reason I came out here. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks. Thanks for. Thanks By for the way, a, it's called molting. Molting. Ah, thanks for being a guest. Ah, a guest yeah. uh, on our show. <laughs> and those were our guests, our special guests for tonight. My on nephew tonight, and my daughter. <laughs> on, on tonight's board. One of whom happens to be one of our most faithful viewers. I know, right? <laughs> I still have that running while I'm doing it. Nice. 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 You're a good kid, man. <laughs> Wow, that was that, that was, was a unique. Uh, we are so professional. I I don't know if you can get more professional than us. <laughs> it doesn't matter, dude. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, really? Whatever. Wait, what's that? The vote said bring them back. No, come on, man! It hurt my feelings. I'm a sensitive guy. But Chase, that is correct. You, you I'll need agree. to come on camera. You need to come on. Your camera. turn. <laughs> I'm already on camera on my channel. We're good. Okay. Okay. You have a channel? Yes. Do you really have a channel? She, she started doing more stuff. Oh, nice. I have 547 views on my first video and then 13 subscribers. That makes me feel bad. She's getting, like, getting like two subscribers a day. Like, she's going full on. How me. many subscribers do you guys have? Ten. Thanks, Chase. Good. No, that was me. I'm Chase now. Going to we have we have subscribers diversified among different services though. Some of them are on HAPS, some of them are on YouTube. That's true, because we on. use do you use HAPS or do you use just YouTube? Just YouTube. Just YouTube. Yeah. yeah so, so ours are kind of mixed around. Yeah, we're I'm, not, trying, I'm trying to start off just with one thing and then we'll work it. That's fine. Start, no, start that's simple, simple. I mean really, start. if you want, you can always just like stream online. I'm better at editing than streaming. It's literally half So you're more of a podcast girl than you are a live streamer. Riley, I, I just streamed yelling sheesh the entire time. Yeah, that's not something that I think our viewers would really be into. <laughs> they like not. alcohol. Do you want some whiskey or vodka? Our viewers do not like alcohol. They are into beer, they which is a holy divine vodka. libation given to us from the it's Lord himself. Vodka is the Russian for only Russians. Vodka. It's not for only Russians. Wait, what do we got? Okay, good night, Ken. Thank you very much for hanging out as long as you did. I actually, <laughs> right? I admire your stamina. Um, if you tune back in again, great. Um, thank you for subscribing. Have a good night, man. Take care. <laughs> All right, what are we at for time here? <clears throat> As soon as you figure 13, out the password to your own phone. I know, right? <laughs> 13 minutes. 13 and a half, 13 and a half total time. So so 11 minutes till we throw the next hops. It's warming. Yeah. And it's just prepped. It'll be fine. I will not forget the download. Oh my goodness. Uh, I should do that now. Except I know, right? I'm not sure my computer would handle it and then it's screw up the broadcast. Well, I'll remind him when we're done broadcasting. We will download it. But I will send I will send Emmy a DM. <laughs> I'm going to tell Emmy that you told me to download her latest album. I will make it happen. Do you connect? I do. I've got a couple of connects. 
I mean, I could go back in, but that's all right. Going on camera. Going up. Well, I got to go rinse the carb away and get it ready. Well, I think at, at the end of the at the end of the boil, we should call it. Call it. I mean, we are at two hours and twenty minutes. That's a long broadcast. That's yes. Easy or average, I would say. Yeah, we go like two and a half to three hours. And you just run out of things to say, you know? It's just like, ah, so how, how about the Yankees? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Anyways, this is going to be good stuff, man. Can I be done? No, I'm not going to eat a hot pellet. It's a hot pellet. Yeah, it smells like hops. <laughs> yeah. Although, you got to admit, that was kind of fun making my dad eat the hot pellet. That was, I don't think he was very really impressed with that. Wait, no. daddy, a hot dog, huh? Not a hot dog. What? What? Look. Okay, so professional broadcast. We interact with our loyal viewers, but not with the peanut gallery over there sitting up against the door. With which you're interacting right now. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> It's bright in here. Yes, it is bright in here. I, and you know, the thing is, is that because the screen froze, no, I don't know how bad tell. the glare is. Yeah, it looks okay. I, I think can lower the door again. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. I'm feeling comfortable. I don't think it's too hot in here. Ah, all right. So, it is. I heard Jack talking. I'm like, oh, who's talking? <laughs> Apparently my neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe you should close the door. Oh, I'll show you. That looks really good, man. Yeah, it's man. A good, good, solid rolling boil as opposed to a roiling. Roiling versus rolling. It's a matter of one letter. It is. Really. Swap the I with the L and you get a totally different experience. <laughs> So yeah, unknowns and all that. That was really fun. I'm really glad Ken came by. That was he was, he was a good viewer. Definitely, definitely made it more. Fun. It is definitely more enjoyable when people like chat back and forth, right? Oh yeah, the interactions. Yeah. Are hey, you choosing your interest to be in here? Hey Chase. Yeah. Since you're sitting right there, how bad is the lag? The lag. I think too bad. As we're on that too. We're on the lag. What's that? We are on the data. We aren't using the Wi-Fi. Right, but I mean, like, is it the five Wi-Fi seconds, slow. 15 seconds? That was about, about 20 10. seconds ago. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so the lag is pretty significant. That's okay. Pap says that they're trying to fix that, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, I mean, technology is technology. It's, it, it takes time for it to come out of this garage beam off to wherever it goes, and then come back to your phone, and then go back, and then come back to me, you know? It's just the way it is. That's why it makes it so hard to do jamming. You know, oh, yeah. Playing music together, that's something that's still... It would be impossible on, on this service, man. You know, what I've, you know what I have seen done successfully, and I know how they do it, is that the one person will play strictly the rhythm part of whatever song it is, Okay. And then the other person will play like they'll either do the singing or they'll do the uh, whatever melodic like instrumental parts. And the way it works is the person who's providing the hardcore rhythm part of whatever song, they just stick it, right? They don't listen to the other person. They just play that rhythm part. And then the second person adds everything in with the rest of the song, and it broadcasts from that second person's equipment out to the world, and it makes it look like they're jamming, even though they're not. Gotcha. They kind of fake it. In sense. Yeah, it's kind of fake jamming, which it's still cool. It's hey, fun. Why don't, why don't you make sure those get put in the closet? Okay. One of the bigger things is for with the thing, the delay doesn't really bother me. It's kind of like every once in a while, it gets like super blurry, like kind of like so animated. Uh, and then, like, after about five minutes, it'll go back to normal. Well, and you know, the thing is, is that 
people who are part of the streaming community, people who watch streaming a lot and do these things, they just kind of, that's the way it is, you know? You accept it. <laughs> and if you can't accept it, then maybe streaming is not for you. <laughs> So anyhow, man, you running out of things to say? Yeah, that's so kind of you know, kind of at did, the our, end. did our full thing, and the bowl is about over. Yeah, um, I had a good time, man. Two and a half hours. Yeah, we got that. All right, about five today. minutes. We'll, we'll have about five minutes. Wanted to put on the. Uh, yeah. bowl. Every, every other Monday, off. It swaps back. No, yeah. This no, is a holiday. No, it's Juneteenth. My, I got the day off because of Juneteenth. Because yeah. since, since it was on a Saturday, my company observed it today, so I got that day off. But, but normally I'd be at work right now. I really wish they would have a better name for this holiday. I think the holiday is a good holiday. I, I really do, actually. I think this is like, yeah, you know what? This is a good thing to commemorate that. Right, but the name is confusing. The name thing. is stupid. Someone's never, someone doesn't know what it commemorates. They have no idea what it means. Emancipation Day. I mean, you figure Ooh, that there are so yeah, many better well, names. Juneteenth. I mean, it's just like, well, that's what I'm saying. Juneteenth is just. <coughs> it's a good holiday that deserves to be commemorated. Sure, but come on. Better name. Than, be a better name than that. Agreed, man. All right. Doesn't matter. Okay. Hey. So for those of you watching on the replay, thank you very much for being here. Thanks to Ken for providing so much interaction. We really appreciate that. Thank, for, thank you to our special guests, so Bailey and Chase, one of whom yeah. happens to be one of our most faithful viewers. Thank you to Riley, who refuses to step on camera, but someday we maybe we'll just tie her up. I have photos. You have I photos? Did, I did, I did, I did a couple videos, but I'm not going to. chicken. We're going to get Riley on camera one day. Hey, we had a great time today. Y'all take off. Uh, take care. We will see you later. And hey, relax. Have a homebrew.